A ray of light cut through heaven and earth. It was the beginning of the emergence of genius. He possessed a mighty power. The temple glowed with fire and people gathered at the gate. The door to the godless continent was created by his power. According to legend, fiery writings with the life story of this genius manifested on the rock. In a flood of energy, lightning and power, the gods recognized him and sent him to the Juxiao mainland to become a celestial god. But a powerful vortex of energy destroyed the former generation of ancients. On the ruins of the martial arts monument, the last one was dying. The story continues at the martial arts academy. The teacher announces the start of the exam. The rules have been announced to everyone. The main thing is that the monument should shine. The teacher's stern look makes it clear that those who fail the exam will be expelled from the academy. The disciples are talking in fear. One young man watching from afar was Jian Chen. The young man wonders about his new reincarnation in this life. He ponders the possibilities that have opened up to him. In his mind, he has a picture of 36 gods in fire and red heat. He recalls his past life, how he was killed by these gods with a strong blow to the chest. The thought of revenge in his new life pleases him, and in his emotions, he doesn't notice how he hits a nearby rock. Enjoying this opportunity, he can already see how the days of these gods are numbered. The impact on the rock attracted the attention of the other students. Two of them thought it was because they were afraid of failing their grades. The teacher also heard the noise and angrily calls for Jian Chen to take the test first. The student clenches his fists with a smirk and walks on. He touches the monument and his hand is enveloped in sparks. Cracks ran down the stone. A powerful force rips the monument from the inside. Everyone present is horrified. Jian Chen cracked the stone with his energy from the strike. The smug one rejoices in what he's done. The mentor is at a loss to understand how this happened. The teacher can't face it in his mind, but we have to admit that the significance of a higher religion has been lost. The rest of the students, depressed, decide to leave the exam. Sensei is in a stupor. Jian Chen in his mind didn't understand why this monument had such significance. Someone tugged at his clothes. Jian Chen turned around and saw his frightened friend Jian Li. After evaluating his friend and his thoughts, Jian Chen decided that he was useless. But the inner gaze behind Jian Li's back saw a giant warrior in a ring of power. Jian Chen reassured his friend. From somewhere, the teacher's voice called out to lay the grating. The proud Jian Chen wanted to already leave with his friend. The teacher grudgingly reminded that without the blessing of the nine deities, the end of the exam was impossible. Annoyed by this, the friends headed towards the temple of deities. After estimating the number of remaining students, the mentor thinks that Jian Chen and Jian Li have escaped. But the friends approached the gate. Jian Chen pulled the gate handles. Once inside, they saw statues of deities placed in a circle. This was the abode of the ancients. The spirits of the statues became wary when they saw the newcomers. Jian Chen was surprised that the deities were eight and not nine, and remembered how they had bullied him in his past life. Going up to one or another statue, he destroyed them. Left face to face with the last statue, Chen froze. An ugly face stared back at him, and he wondered who made such an ugly statue. Jian Chen couldn't understand why such ugliness existed and intended to smash her. The two friends stood back to back amongst the ruins of statues, Jian Li trying to figure out what had happened. A teacher appeared in the doorway with three students. With a smirk, he noticed that the blessing had not been received. The next moment he saw the ruins, he was maddened to realize what had happened. From the horror of Jian Chen's act, the mentor clenched his teeth. The teacher was already about to attack Jian Chen. The disciples restrained him as best they could. Realizing that things would not be resolved simply like this, Jian Chen turned to the eight spirits that remained at the statues. In an instant, he flew into the middle of the temple. Fire dragons wriggled along the pillars, and fire filled the entire space. The teacher and his students froze trying to figure out how he got the blessing. Jin Li watched, admiring his friend's strength. Jen Chen's feet slowly touched the floor under his teacher's taunts about his lack of cultivation talent. The teacher laughed at the choice of the gods. The chosen one of the gods grew angry at the teacher's provocations. Continuing to humiliate Jian Chen, Sensei remarked that he only had nine spiritual veins, and only three could be opened. Such an underestimation offended Jian Chen. He claimed that he would open all nine right now. The mentor and his students looked at him eagerly. They laughed and provoked Jian Chen to show them this. Sparks and lightning enveloped him. Evilly smiling Jian Chen was about to show them all his strength. The expression in the teacher's eyes changed every second. He couldn't understand how this was possible, and why Jian Chen's spiritual veins weren't blocked. Jian Chen soared higher, scarlet glow and sparks of vitality enveloping him. He was uncovering the first spiritual vein. Being in the streams of power, Jian Chen realized that the patience of the academy and the teacher was worth it. Worth the power that helps to open a spiritual vein. But the problem of being able to use a martial art with only one hand puzzled Jian Chen. He pondered over the solution. The faces of the students who came with the teacher tensed. 
one couldn't tell if it was a coincidence. The other man's face covered with sweat, he realized that a second vein was about to be opened. The third was startled to realize that the strength in Jian Chen was far greater. The third disciple's face expressed animal fear. Jian Chen's spiritual veins opened one after another and his cultivation level simply soared. Chosen by the gods, Jian Chen was absorbed in the process of unfolding. He is in fiery streams and vortexes of energies. His friend Jian Li watched silently. In his mind, he couldn't believe that the nine spiritual veins had already opened. The teacher's jaw just dropped, and his eyes popped out of his orbits. Jian Chen slowly opened his eyes. Even through them sparked energy and strength. Satisfied with himself, he realized how impressed everyone was. The teacher was gloomy and angry. The thought of how this was happening kept him busy. My teeth clenched themselves to the point of pain. Unexpectedly, the teacher announced Jian Chen as his successor and future master. Everyone was completely shocked. The three at the students behind Sensei's back opened their mouths in surprise. A crowd of the rest of the students poured through the temple doors, shocked by this news. Jin Chen stiffly looked at the teacher. With a haughty smirk, he announced that such a teacher was not needed at the academy. Continuing to smile smugly, Jin Chen announced that he was not a receiver, but a true master. Sensei was stunned at such insolence and ridicule. Recovering, he tried to ground Jian Chen's arrogance by reminding him that a quick rise would also mean a quick fall. But Jian Chen's confidence was unbreakable, he only tiredly covered his eyes. With his arms crossed on his chest, Jian Chen decided to humiliate the teacher with his knowledge as well, realizing that there would be no response. He asked a question about the lost magic seals, and the next moment, snapping out of his seat, Jian Chen flew to his teacher, accusing him of being worthless. Their gazes met. You could see the literal spark of hatred between them. Continuing to stand opposite each other, the teacher decided to give a year of time to raise Jian Chen's cultivation to his level and only then give the master's seat. Jian Chen mockingly remarked that he could do it in three months. He proudly walked past the teacher to the gate of the ancient asylum, declaring that no one should bother him there for those months. He strode toward the giant golden door of the asylum. Behind him, a crowd of students whispered. The teacher's face was ready to crack with anger. He was ready to die rather than allow this to happen. Jin Li's bewildered friend was still watching what was happening. He wondered if he would be able to be by his friend's side after such a discovery of power in him. The story shifts to Kuang Zun Academy. Four unknown people walk towards the door. They were Elder Mu of Sheng Wuzong and his followers. The disciples of the academy crowded at the entrance. There was a scuffle between those who came and the disciples. One of the students could barely stand on his feet, leaning on his sword. One of the uninvited guests mocked their weakness. The injured man looked at his opponent with anger. He was trying to say that an academy master should be shown respect. The apprentice couldn't stand on his feet and fell down losing a lot of blood. The master stepped forward with a crowd of students behind him. One of the newcomers stood behind the elder's back and taunted the academy students and the master. He was sure that their elder was much stronger. The academy teacher's gaze expressed rage and anger. He tried to appeal to the elder to enlighten his followers. The elder was clearly preparing to attack. His hand had already started to coil, concentrating his power. The still lying academy student was in fear for his life. The elder's gaze squinted slyly. By belittling the master's cultivation level and strength, he made it clear that he didn't consider him a strong opponent. Throwing forward his hand with the energy already concentrated for the strike, the elder went for the master. The master recoiled back in consternation. In the next moment, the elder simply grabbed the master's face in a leap. With all his might, he hurls it into the crowd of students standing behind him. With such a powerful blow, the master spits blood and flies back at the students, knocking them down. The disciples, like pins from a ball, cannot stand on their feet, blood spurting out of their mouths. The master and apprentices fly off into the wall. A proud-looking elder, surrounded by his followers, walks past them, intending to enter the main hall of the academy. For a second, the elder meets master's gaze, remarking in a mocking tone that the Zun Academy is coming to an end. The beaten and humiliated master sat contemplating the end of the academy. One of the injured disciples reminded him of Jian Chen. He was still in the ancient asylum refining his strength and discovering spiritual veins. Master's face was battered and bloody. He didn't want to admit that Chen could help. The crippled disciple recalled how Chen had opened nine veins in a matter of minutes. In the teacher's mind, the images of Jian Chen being full of energy and strength at the moment of discovery came to mind. The thought of having to beg him for help was depressing. The elder and his followers were on their way to the main hall. The master looked at them hatefully, his fists clenched to the point of pain. He realized that there was no way he was going to let the academy fall. Jian Chen was immersed in practicing in the ancient lodge. 
surrounded by fire, light, and lightning. He opened his spiritual veins. The thirteenth spiritual vein opened up. Chen continued to concentrate with his eyes closed and filled with power. The level of concentration was very high. Arms and legs were permeated with streams of energy. Chen opened his eyes. The power was literally in and around him, permeating his entire body. He was determined to open all 36 spiritual veins. Jian Chen could already feel the power of the 13 open spiritual veins. He was a little regretful that he had lost his former skills after being reborn in this life. Seated on the throne in the lodge, Chen remembered the nine heavenly practices that were kept in the Tibetan temple. They could give incredible power. Suddenly, something caught Chen Ye's attention. He looked up. It was the teacher who came to him. His gaze was full of fatigue. Looking down at his sensei, Chen asked why he was being interrupted. Through gritted teeth, the teacher reported the attack on the academy. Chen Ye's eyes scrutinized the master. He wondered why the sensei was so beaten. Grimacing in pain, the master announced the death of his strongest student. He feared that the academy was over. Chen continued to sit on the throne. Without giving away his thoughts, he noticed how easily the master was beaten. Without looking away, the thought flashed through my mind of how pathetic the teacher was right now. Sensing what Chen was thinking, the sensei lowered his eyes to the floor. He reported that Elder Mu of Sheng Wuzong was here. Jian Chen jumped to his feet, his gaze filled with brightness. The energy of power enveloped him, and he left behind the exhausted teacher and rushed towards the exit of the haven. The picture was a sad one. In the clearing in front of the academy, the followers of the elder from Sheng Wuzong were beating up the master's disciples and bullying them. One of Sheng Wuzong's followers was holding a disciple of the academy by the scruff of his neck humiliating and mocking. He was sure that elder Sheng Wuzong who had come here was invincible and the academy was over. Without letting go of the poor boy, he looked around the clearing with the barely alive and maimed students. Two figures appeared in the distance. It was Jian Chen and the academy master who were walking. Jian Chen and Master's faces were puzzled. Master was worried about the fate of the Academy. Jian Chen looked at him reproachfully. Master's weakness was humiliating to the Academy. Jian Chen tiredly raised his hand to stop all reflection. He was absolutely certain of his victory. Proudly, Jian Chen walked forward towards the beating Academy students. Without a doubt, the fact that he had discovered 13 spiritual veins gave him unshakable confidence in his strength and victory. Jian Chen stopped in the thick of the fight. He smiled mockingly and began to address his attackers wryly. The elder's followers were angered by this tone. They took notice of him thinking that he was just an ordinary weak disciple and responded with ridicule. Jin Shen looking condescendingly at them continued to ridicule them, urging them to leave willingly. He raised his hand stiffly pointing them toward the exit. One of the Sheng Wuzong school's followers had all of his facial muscles tense up from such insolence. In an instant, he jumped up ready to deliver his most powerful blow. His eyes were burning from the concentration of energy and his hands were already aflame. Jian Chen smugly smirked. The attacker was already approaching. He had his hands over Chen Ye's head, and he was enveloped in flames of energy from all sides. It was clear that this was the most powerful and strongest blow he could deliver. The blow was struck. Fire and light flooded everything. The attacker, confident of his victory, jumped back. The master, who was watching from the side, stood there in fear, dead or alive. He blamed himself for hoping the academy would win. The one who had struck, with a vicious smile, was sure that he had killed Jian Chen. He looked in his direction, but for a moment his eyes widened with surprise. The dust raised from the fight began to settle, and the outline of Jin Chen's figure appeared. He seemed to be unharmed. Sensei opened his mouth in utter shock watching this. The followers of the elder who had attacked the academy stood in a group and couldn't believe their eyes. They were sure that this most powerful blow of their comrade in arms would simply wipe out everything and everyone. Jin Chen's face with burning and eyes from the power of energy became visible to all the attackers. He once again firmly asked them to leave the academy. The four enemies were still confident of their victory. They were hurling insults and preparing for a collective strike. All of them gathered their strength and sent a stream of fire and energy towards Jian Chen's side. But Chen did not even move from his seat, seeing that a stream of fire was directed at him. The master behind him didn't understand why Chen was standing like a pillar. Chen simply began to run his hand over the fire. In one motion, he effortlessly simply pushed the stream away from him to the side. The attackers were completely discouraged. Their faces expressed incomprehension and fear. It seemed to them that they were facing some monster with incredible strength. Chen, satisfied with this outcome of the strike, smiled evilly. He had already started to accumulate strength for a counterattack. Sparks were concentrating around him and running even in his eyes. He began to raise his hand concentrating the energy, a slight sweep. 
sheaves of sparks and lightning began to envelop the space around his hand. Chen had already taken up a fighting stance to retaliate. His flame energy flared up so much that lightning and fire were just everywhere. The faces of the opponents were full of terror. They realized that things were very bad. The incredible flow of energy and power that deployed Chen began to sweep the hapless attackers from their seats. One of them was simply ripped off the ground and thrown towards where Elder Sheng Wu Zonga himself was standing. The Elder caught his disciple's breathless body in his hand. The other disciples standing near him were frightened by Chenya's cultivation level, the Elder's face tense to the point of anger. He was amazed at the audacity of someone killing his disciple just in front of his eyes. He crouched by his follower's body, touched his pulse, but there was none. The disciple is dead. Chen stood with a smug smile. The energy was still enveloping him. He was also ready to fight back against Elder Sheng Wuzong himself. Jinchen looked towards the Elder. He knew very well that Elder Mu's cultivation level was very high, and he was eager to test his strength. The Elder began to draw his sword from its sheath. He was determined to either win or die. Energy began to build up around the sword. He gripped the hilt of the sword with both hands, remembering that he had come for one purpose, to destroy Kuang Zun Academy on the orders of the head. The Elder rose above the ground. He swung his flaming sword so fast that he seemed to have several pairs of hands. Power, energy, and lightning began to swirl around him. The students of the Academy rushed to flee, seeing the Elder accumulating more and more power and preparing to strike. The Academy's sensei watching this was completely depressed. He blamed himself and his weakness for all of this. Chen, seeing his sensei in such a state, simply could not understand how such a weakling became a master. He stood motionless as the Elder gathered his strength. He turned slightly towards Sensei and signaled for him to leave the battlefield. Shocked by this, the master persuaded Chenya to flee. He was sure he wouldn't stand a chance in a fight. Building up strength in response, Chen was amazed at his Sensei's weakness. The concentration of power and energy could already be seen in his eyes. The thought of how such a weak teacher became a master kept him thinking. Sparks of lightning were already enveloping Chenya's entire body. He turned to the elder again suggesting that he simply leave the academy. The elder had no intention of retreating. He was sure of his victory. His eyes sparkled with energy. It began to form a deadly typhoon swirling ever more violently. Chen didn't move as he watched this. The master standing behind him realized that things were bad. Extending his arm forward ready to strike, Chen made it clear that he would only be able to deal with the elder alone. The flow of energy from Chenya's hand had already started to reach the elder. A powerful blue ray of power from Chenya's hand flew towards Elder Sheng Wuzong. He was horrified to realize that he was not a weak opponent. The stream had pierced through him. The force of the blow simply swept the elder off his feet. He fell to the ground with no signs of life. Everyone present was shocked. Chen was still in the light of energy. The elder was lying in a pool of blood without moving. Both the disciples of the academy and the elder's followers were wondering how such a thing was possible and whether Elder Mu was meters away. Jian Chen was very proud of himself. The energy around him was already subsiding. He thought that under other circumstances he would not have been able to win, but now he was ready to sweep the fierce one out of his way. The elder's followers scattered in panic. Looking at the breathless body of their leader, they knew for sure that this could happen to them too. Master and Chen were left alone. Sensei could not understand why Chen had won. Jian Chen was angry at the master for his weakness. He was sure that the title of master to the teacher could no longer belong to him. Chenya's words angered Sensei. In a blaze of anger, he was about to attack to prove how worthy he was of the title of master. Chenya's one hard look toward the teacher was enough to convey that he was not joking, and the fate of the Sheng Wuzong elder could be, and the teacher. Sensei looked at the corpse of the elder with the hole in his head. He clearly didn't want to take a seat next to him. He remained silent. Jin Chen went to the other students of the academy. He announced that he was the new master, and asked them to bring him some spiritual stones from the treasury. The disciple Chen approached didn't understand the request, and Chen just decided to go himself. Upon arriving at the treasury, what was Jian Chen's surprise that it was empty? None of the gems that he had previously left behind were left there. He thought the robbery was the work of the elders attacking followers. Annoyed by this state of affairs, Chen decided to go to town and asked for a horse to be prepared for him. The hope that if he went now he would catch up with the thieves never left him. When Chen Ya arrived at the stables, he was disappointed again. He was told that the horses had also been stolen, and could only ride on the donkey that had been left behind. This news made Chen's mouth water. There was nothing to do. Jian Chen rode to Qinyun City on a donkey. He thought that he would be the first master to ride a donkey. Passing by other people walking to the city, 
Chen firmly decided that as soon as he got some money, he would immediately buy a horse. The guards outside the city, seeing Chenya on a donkey, mockingly said that poor people have no place here. Such insolence hurt Chenya. He stared at the guards, wondering if he was being accurately addressed. Chen got off the donkey and looked at the guards and asked if they were saying that to him. The guards blocked his path with their spears and continued to taunt him. They thought that a cultivator could not ride a donkey. Jian Chen tensed up. He announced that he was the master of the Kuang Zun Academy. But the guards only smiled, joking that a place like Kuang Zun was some kind of backwater for the worthless. Chenya's face contorted with anger. In an instant, a powerful blow with a stream of fire headed towards the guards. The gnarled faces of the guards could only spit blood. Two flashes of fire sealed them into the gate wall. Barely regaining consciousness, they wrinkled their faces in pain. Opening their eyes, they stared at Chenya trying to understand how it was possible that someone had hit them. Jin Chen took the reins of the donkey and started moving towards the entrance of the city. Walking up close to the guards, he looked down at them with a horrified look from top to bottom, wondering if he could enter now. All the guards had in their heads was the thought that they were about to be killed. The guards quickly dispersed to the sides, and with an obliging smirk, pointed their hands toward the entrance, and invited Chenya to enter. Jin Chen smiled haughtily. He walked forward and stretched a little to relax tense muscles, then shouted that the guards had asked for it themselves. Two battered and bruised faces stared silently back at him. Jen Chen walked to the store door tying the donkey outside. He opened the doors and turned to the salesman drawing his attention. While Chen's back was to the donkey, someone crept up on the animal. It was the two previously beaten guards. They grinned and headed toward the donkey. The humiliated guards decided to avenge the beating and untied the reins of the donkey. Chen walked into the store. The salesman was busy behind the counter. Jian Chen asked if there were any scarlet spirit herbs in the store. In his thoughts, Chen remembered that the scarlet spirit grass was very necessary in medicine. And a medicine based on it would help to increase strength many times over. The seller did not take a break from his business, snapped back to Chen, went to look for her somewhere else. Suddenly, behind Chenya's back, someone remarked that such a poor man didn't need scarlet grass, and there shouldn't be a couple spirit stones. Chen examined his clothes, they were dirty and tattered. He thought it would be a good idea to change them, trying to shake the dust off his clothes at least a little. Chen wondered why the unknown man thought he couldn't afford scarlet grass. The stranger carelessly threw a gem towards Chenya. He wanted to be the first to buy the scarlet spirit grass, because it was very valuable, and had promised it to Sister Huer. The jewel fell right at Jen Chen's feet. The stranger said that this spirit stone was for him, and that he should get out of here. Chen was angry at such insolence. He squinted at the stranger. They came face to face. Chan stepped on a stone on the floor with one foot. The two men got into a verbal altercation over who would get the scarlet grass. Remembering that this store sold elixirs, Chen grabbed the brush lying on the table in ink. Starting to brush something on the paper, Chen said he had a proposal for the seller. Jen Chen began to write on the paper with such force that he seemed to be wielding a sword instead of a brush. He finished and put the brush back to the inkwell. Jian Chen finished, took the sheet he was writing on, and evaluated what was written. This was the recipe for the elixir. He placed a piece of paper on the counter and announced that he wanted to exchange the recipe for the elixir of the blood pill for the scarlet herb. The vendor turned around in surprise. The stranger who had insulted Chen earlier stood surprised in the doorway holding a girl by the waist. It was Huir's sister. The face of the stranger in the doorway changed at what he heard. He had never known about the elixir Chen had spoken of. The salesman snapped out of his seat. His eyes widened at what he heard. D jumped up to the piece of paper on the counter, not believing what he had heard that someone wanted to trade such a rare recipe. With his eyes, the salesman quickly ran through the written prescription. Reading the recipe, the salesman couldn't believe his eyes. He didn't think it was possible. The stranger and the girl watching did not understand what was happening. The seller grabbed the recipe and quickly ran somewhere. Chen didn't understand where he was going and tried to ask about the scarlet herb, to which the salesman ran out of the store and said if the recipe was true, the scarlet herb would be given to Chen. The stranger and the girl stood there trying to figure out what was going on. Realizing that the scarlet herb was slipping away, the girl turned to the guy, reminding him that he had promised her to buy scarlet herb. At this reminder, he flew into a rage and started insulting Chenya with demands to give the herb to him. Tiredly, Chen asked who this guy was. In his mind, John Chen estimated how many more people wanted to provoke him today. Sister Huer was shocked at such insolence. She couldn't understand who allowed themselves to talk like this. The young man was a young master from Sheng Wuzong School. Jian Chen was surprised at this turn of events. He was alarmed that once again he had to face someone from Sheng Wuzong. 
The young master from Sheng Wuzong crossed his arms on his chest, proud of himself. He and his companion mocked Jian Chen that he should have begged for mercy while kneeling. Anger and rage lit up Jian Chen's face with fire, but suddenly he froze without moving. His gaze was directed toward the door of the store. Young master Sheng Wuzong thought it was a reaction to him and started laughing at Jian Chen. A thoughtful elderly man and a young girl entered the store. The whole crowd was watching them intently. Jian Chen looked at the girl thoughtfully. He saw the strength of Tai Yin, Moon Force. But the girl was in the last stage of her strength and there was a toxin accumulating in her body, which if not eliminated within 10 days would lead to the girl's death. The elderly man froze in place and stared at Jian Chen. He couldn't believe that someone had said such a thing out loud. A thought of amazement resounded in that man's mind. How with just a single glance it was possible for the claw to detect the Tai Yin power and that there were only 10 days to solve the toxin problem from that power. Chen smugly raised a finger up and proudly said that he knew how to help turn the power into sacred Tai Yin. The elderly man, who was the young girl's grandfather, was overjoyed. He already wanted to ask Chen Ya more about his knowledge. In the distance, young master Shen Wuzong was indignant at being ignored by everyone. Young master Shen Wuzong became angry. He started shouting insults towards Jian Chen. He applied his cultivation level, accumulated energy, and rushed to attack the standing Jian Chen. Chen only sighed tiredly and decided to himself it would be better for this upstart to disappear somewhere. And at some point, a sudden powerful blow threw the young master aside. He flew backwards with his back at a tremendous speed. A powerful stream of energy threw him into the wall. It was the young girl's elderly grandfather who did this. He stood in a blaze of energy and looked at the defeated young master. Chen didn't even look surprised at this. He only noted to himself that the elder's spiritual power was similar to that of the five divine disciples. Sister Huir, who came with the young master, sat down beside him. The young master, after flying into the wall and grimaced in pain, the elder stiffly turned away from the defeated man. He made it clear that he wanted to talk to Jian Chen and would not let anyone interfere with him. Sister Huir, who was still near the young master, and the master himself, were surprised to notice the old man's hip plate with the name of Shuehai Kanshan, Snow Mountain School on it. The young girl's grandfather invited Jian Chen gestured for Jian Chen to sit down. Barely on his feet, the embittered young master sent Sister Huir to Shen Wuzong School to immediately inform the elders of the attack on him. The lust for revenge distorted the young master's face into a vicious grimace. He intended to get even with Jian Chen. The elder, his granddaughter, and Chen sat down at the table. The grandfather turned to Xiao Yu's granddaughter to take off his hat so Chen could assess her condition. The girl removed her hat with a slight movement of one hand. It turned out to be a very beautiful girl. Chen stared at her for a moment without tearing his gaze away. Quickly pulling himself together, he coughed. He had to say that it was only possible to correct the yin in the granddaughter's body and turn it into Tai Yin power if the girl stayed with Jian Chen. Without missing his advantage, Chen figured out in his mind that Saint Yin's strength was extremely rare and it would be good to get such a disciple into the Kuang Zun Academy. The elder and the girl thought about the proposal. The girl was afraid of her grandfather's decision, while the elder doubted whether what Chen was saying was possible. Chen grinned and got up from the table, not intending to bargain. He only needed the elder's consent to his offer. Leaving the table, Chen smugly remarked that the girl had only 10 days left, and that he gives only 10 days to think about his proposal, not forgetting to mention that you can find him at the academy Quan Zun. The elder did not like this state of affairs. He looked after Jian Qin and was absorbed in his own thoughts. The grandfather and granddaughter left the store full of thoughts about what they had heard. Young Xiao Yu wondered who that man was and why he was dressed like that. Xiao Yu's granddaughter went outside and asked her grandfather if what she had heard in the store was true. The grandfather had to recognize the gravity of the situation and that his granddaughter had 10 days left. Grandpa S's face was full of bitterness at the realization of the hopelessness of the situation. It seemed to be the only way to let Xiao Yu go with Jian Chen. Chen stood in the huge store hall looking at the red-hot boiling vat. The vendor from whom Chen wanted to exchange the elixir recipe for the spirit herb was running around looking for Jian Chen with a hot cauldron that had apparently just been taken off the stove. He called out to Master Jian Cheng with all his might. Finally, he found it by the column. Jian Chen was surprised to see the alchemist seller holding a hot cauldron. In thought, Chen noticed that the guy's hands were burned. Disregarding his burnt hands, the young alchemist was full of joy. He remade the elixir according to Jian Chenya's recipe and obtained the long-lost medicine. Joyfully, he showed the result to Chenya and wondered who he was 
and where he was from. Jian Chen gave his name and said that he was from Quanzun Academy. Since the recipe was correct, he recalled that he had asked for the Scarlet Spirit Herb. In his thoughts, Chen noted that he was popular wherever he went. The young alchemist happily embraced the cauldron of elixir. The second young man held out the spirit herb to Jian Cheng. Taking it, Chen examined it and thought for a moment. Embarrassed, Chen asked to be allowed to use the furnace and the herbs that were in the store to practice alchemy. He thought it would be good for the academy to have its own furnace. The alchemists happily pointed the way to the furnace with their hands and didn't skimp on herbs. Approaching the furnace, Chen began to heat it up with a stream of fire and cultivation energy. Suddenly, from behind him, someone shouted and stopped him. There was a senior alchemist standing among the young alchemists. It was the shopkeeper. He shouted and condemned the alchemists for their frivolity and for groveling before some youngster. The young alchemists bowed to the shopkeeper Lord Tong and tried to explain what was going on. He didn't let them say a word. Turning directly to Jian Chen, Mr. Tong assumed that the herbs were needed to prepare a blood pill. The shopkeeper himself was unable to prepare this pill at the time, he was sure that Jian Chen wouldn't be successful. He demanded a fee for the use of the herbs. One of the young alchemists told Chen that Master Tong used to be a third-rank alchemist. Ten years ago, Jian Chen was upset by this fact. He remembered that he was already an alchemy master at 15, and had already reached the ninth rank at 17. The shopkeeper's level was negligible. Paying no further attention to the shopkeeper's claims, Chen began to practice alchemy. He put the first herbs into the cauldron. Tong San's eyes slowly widened watching this. Unable to stand it, he shouted that Chen was doing everything wrong and was just playing around with alchemy. Behind them, the young alchemists began to whisper, suggesting that perhaps they had made a mistake in so exalting the unknown master. Suddenly the furnace flared up and glowed to a golden color. Everyone present gaped at what they saw. A flower of unprecedented beauty rose upward from the boiler out of the steam. Mr. Tong stood there with his eyes bulging in shock. He couldn't believe it was possible. The young alchemists held their heads together. The flower in the furnace only meant one thing. Jian Chen's alchemy level was far above that of the shopkeeper. Jian Chen was holding a bloody pill in his hands. His face expressed dissatisfaction with the quality of the medicine. He did not achieve over quality and pondered where miscalculated. Simply tossing the pill on the floor, Chen was ready to continue. The alchemist rushed to pick up the pill. After catching it, the young alchemist wondered why Chen had done that. To them, it was the best pill Jian Chen thought it was just trash. The shopkeeper stood still seeing that Chen continued his experiment and wanted to achieve a better result. There was a bright flash of an explosion. Mr. Tong opened his mouth and eyes in astonishment. From the cauldron on the stove rose a bloody tablet of unprecedented purity and quality, surrounded by amazing lotuses. Everyone who saw it stood in amazement. The shopkeeper fell on his knees wondering such a miracle. He wondered how it was possible that Jian Chen had obtained a divine flower. Chen stood smugly. He his whole appearance spoke of the confidence that he had proven his skill. Lord Tong smiled, still sitting at the cauldron. He admitted his lack of education and urged Jian Chen to stay at his store. The young alchemists supported the idea. They also urged Chen Ya to stay because the store would work even better with him. But he declined thanking her for such a generous offer and taking his prepared elixir. Chen announced that he was from Kuangzun Academy and had no intention of staying at the store. He headed for the exit of the store. The alchemists stared after him. After Chen Ya left the store, an argument ensued between the alchemists. Some were surprised that the Kuangzun Academy had not been destroyed. Others were happy that there were such amazing masters there. Unexpectedly, Mr. Tong decided to leave the store and hand it over to the young alchemists and become a teacher. After leaving the store, Chen went to the place where he left his donkey. But not finding it, he realized that it had been stolen by the guards, whom he had beaten a little. Already mentally adjusting himself that in the return trip to the academy will have to go on foot, Chen smelled a very tasty smell of roasted meat. Four guards were sitting around the fire and eating meat roasted on sticks. Chen went to the fire and realized from the talk that it was his donkey. They stole and roasted the donkey. Annoyed, Chen realized that there were no ways to get to the academy on horseback. When the guards saw him, they started laughing and joking about how appetizing his donkey was and mockingly offered him a taste. Hatred and anger swept over Jian Chen. The power began to envelop him in bright flames. Saying that he was the king of all deities, Chen prepared to attack. He made a single lunge accumulating power in his arm. And in the next moment, the city guards were already flying around from the powerful energy blast. Another guard standing nearby intended to fight back against Jian Chen accusing him of being cruel and disorderly in the city. 
The guards rushed at Chen with all their might. Chen stiffly looked at him, assessing the force of the blow. And in the next instant, with one hand, Chen threw the guard away like a toy. Looking down at the unfortunate guard, Chen declared that the wrath of the deities was beyond the power of mortals to withstand. The disgraced guard sat wiping away the blood looking at Chenya and wondering who he was. The townspeople began to gather. They were discussing Jian Chen for beating a guard and using force within the walls of Qinyun City. Opposite Chenya stood another guard. He accused him of using force and cruelty. Chen answered nothing, and the guard was infuriated by this disregard. The townspeople whispered confidently that Jian Chen now couldn't stand up to one of the four strongest guards. Chen assessed the situation. The guard was strong and capable, but Chen had no doubts about his victory. He began to build up energy in his hand. Taking a fighting stance and preparing to strike, two bright yellow energy swords appeared in Chenya's hands. The guard had already accumulated energy and was attacking Jian Chen. The guard gathered all the energy in his hand in the form of a huge lion with its mouth open. Chen smirked just seeing such a thing. In an instant, struck several blows with his energy swords cutting the air into a sieve. Chen finished his lunge, one of the swords had blood dripping down one of the swords. The guard fell to the ground writhing in pain. Lying in a pool of blood, the guard looked angrily at Chenya, trying to figure out who he was. The townspeople watching all this were whispering, wondering who this stranger was that beat up the guard. Chen only turned around a little to let them know that he would not be lenient next time. Suddenly, some sound caught Jian Chen's gaze. He barely had time to dodge the sword. Someone was attacking again. It was the young master from Sheng Wu Zong who had returned. He hadn't forgotten his humiliation at the store and decided to take revenge. Jin Chen was already annoyed by this annoying upstart and decided that it was time to deal with it. But all of a sudden, two unknown people appeared behind Young Master. One of them was preparing to attack Jian Chenya in a leap. Not expecting such a thing, Chen barely dodged the powerful energy strike. Another second and a new powerful energy burst flew at him. Master Sheng Wuzong rejoiced and urged Chenya to apologize by licking his shoes. One blow still reached Jian Chen. He wiped off the blood as he assessed the situation and realized that these two were subordinates of Sheng Wuzong's master. Determined not to stop there, one of Sheng Wuzong's school's underlings once again accumulated strength in his hand. Seeing this, Jin Chen became angry. He began to accumulate energy to retaliate. The minions of Sheng Wuzong's school had already rushed to attack. The young master behind their backs cheered like a child and shouted insults. Suddenly a shout came from somewhere, calling for a non-lethal attack on Chen Ya. The eyes of the attackers rounded. Between Jin Chen and the attackers, the shopkeeper Mr. Tong appeared from somewhere. He protected Jian Chen with his cultivation energy. Mr. Tong chased the attackers away saying that no one had the right to attack a great master like Jian Chen. Chen was overjoyed at this appearance. He didn't have to do the dirty work himself. Young master Sheng Wuzong was taken aback. Mr. Tong was a respected alchemist in the city and his store would be in good standing. He thought that the master had just been fooled. Mr. Tong flew into a rage and was already ready to engage in a fight with the young master himself to prove his esteem at Jian Chen Yu. The townspeople and everyone in the crowd were shocked by Mr. Tong's reaction. Everyone wondered who this stranger Jian Chen was. Master Sheng Wuzonga tried to reason with Tong, not understanding why this outsider had become a VIP. Mr. Tong shouted towards Sheng Wuzong AES followers. He was definitely sure that no disciples or schools had the right to cause trouble to his store or his customers. The young master tensed up. He didn't want to defame the honor of the store. He quickly changed from anger to mercy and smiled, assuring me that he didn't mean to cause trouble for the store. The young master turned around and called for his minions to retreat. The young alchemists had barely caught up with Master Tong. They dragged huge bags and carts loaded with cauldrons of herbs and alchemical supplies. They were very happy when they finally caught up with Mr. Tong. Tong gave them a hard look. He said the store didn't need them anymore and there was no reason to run after him. The alchemists had no intention of leaving. Mr. Tong noticed that Jian Chen was injured and volunteered to escort him to Kuangzun Academy. Chen smiled wryly as he realized that Tong had decided to move his store to the academy, and the alchemists in turn had no intention of backing down. Tong confirmed Chen Ya's assumption. He had decided to teach and practice in Kuangzun. The alchemists were determined to follow him. Chen was grateful in his mind to Tong for his decision to escort and stay in Kuangzun. He had already thought he would never make it out of the city. Chen gave a couple of instructions regarding preparing the horses and herbs with the stove to go. Everyone agreed to prepare everything quickly. The townspeople who witnessed this conversation were in complete shock. They didn't understand why an alchemist like Tong would be so obliging and courteous to a strange stranger. 
Seeing this, they concluded that the Kuang Zun Academy had really started to train great masters and was becoming famous. Young Xiaoyu, whose grandfather had asked Jianchen for help, also saw what was happening. She wondered where such a famous master had come to the city. She still does not dare to understand why the alchemists respect him so much. The grandfather standing next to him concluded that Chen's words about Chen Ye's ability to heal his granddaughter were true. Xiao Yu was upset as she realized that she would now have to go to Kuang Zun Academy. Grandpa confirmed her hunch, but to do it a little later. An hour later, Jen Chen and the alchemists reached Kuan Zun. The former master who greeted them gaped in surprise. He couldn't believe they all wanted to live in the academy. Chen confirmed his assumptions. The alchemists were standing around in joy. The former master was extremely satisfied. This was all very positive for the academy's reputation. Tong was interested in where to settle down. Chen wanted privacy for practicing and preparing the elixir, so he entrusted the former master to accommodate the new guests. Tong was excited that perhaps the elixir would once again be of the highest level. But Chen told him that he was only going to make a black level elixir. Tong and the alchemists were upset. The former academy master had already invited them to accommodate them. Jian Chen was in deep practice. He kept trying to discover a new spiritual vein. The fire and sparks of energies enveloped him more and more. Chen dipped into the practices again and again, focusing energy in the area of the solar weave. He thought that the black level elixir was not as powerful, but even it could help open 20 spiritual veins. The alchemists had brought enough raw materials, and Chen intended to use them. Suddenly, someone burst through the door. It was Jian Chen's friend, Jian Li's brother. He couldn't stand on his feet and just fell down at the entrance. Chen helped him up trying to figure out what had happened. Jin Li was beaten and could barely walk. He said that Sheng Wuzong's men had attacked the academy again and had already broken through to the gate. Chen Ye's eyes lit up with anger. After sitting down, his brother Jian Li Chen decided to split with Sheng Wuzong's men. He headed towards the exit. The former academy master was the only one resisting the attackers. He was the only one standing against them, holding them back. Young master Sheng Wuzong was persuaded to give up Jian Cheng Ye and then was willing to not kill the others. Sheng Wuzong's associates were clamoring for Cheng's rendition. They wanted to split with him. The former master stood his ground. He was not pleased with Jian Chen, but he was the new master of the academy and so worthy of protection. The former master's eyes burned with fire. He resolutely refused to give up Jian Chen and was willing to die for him. Chen, who was already standing behind him, heard the entire conversation. Chen continued to observe and noted in his thoughts that former master Lu Qing Chen was important to the academy. Chen stepped forward and stood between the former master and the academy threateners. The young master, satisfied with this course of action, crossed his arms on his chest, confident that today Chen will answer for the humiliation. His eyes burned with anger and was already ready to kill Chen Ye. Mr. Tong appeared behind Chen Ye. He was angered by such disrespect from Sheng Wuzong's followers towards Jen Chen. The young master paid his respects to Tong and informed him that Chen had committed a murder. He wondered what the store and the alchemists thought of this event. Tong hesitated, not knowing what to say. Chen, on the other hand, decided to take on all those who had come. Master Sheng Wuzong smiled evilly. He noted that since the academy's monument had been destroyed, a part of the defense had fallen as well. This gave him the confidence that the entire academy could be destroyed. Chen stared back just as angrily. He remembered something and began to concentrate his energies. After creating large streams of energy, he had already started to direct them towards the enemies. Sheng Wuzong's followers were extremely tense when they saw such power. The young master and his companions were not in the least bit frightened. This energy was the power of a great guardian. Chen completed his concentration and prepared to attack. The power was nothing but God's power. Jian Chen snapped out of his seat and headed towards the young master full of strength. In the next instant, with a powerful punch to Master Shen Wuzong's chest, he set an energy seal on his chest. The master could barely withstand the blow. The seal was realized. Shen Wuzong's minions were shocked. The young master couldn't resume cultivation. It was blocked by the seal. Chen finished and announced that the cultivation seal would last for 10 days. If any Shen Wuzong attacked the academy, the young master would die. In his thoughts, Chen noted that the spiritual messages left by the disciples had disappeared. And this meant that all preparations were complete. Master Sheng Wuzong only laughed in response, not believing in either Sixth the Seal or Chen Ye's power. He called on the elders who had come with him to help. One of them gathered around the master and began to forcefully try to break the seal. Suddenly, the unexplainable happened. The young master began to choke and bleed. His face was contorted in pain. 
The elders stopped trying to break the seal. They were afraid for the master without realizing what had happened. Chen explained with a nonchalant face that whoever undertook to break the seal would die. If within 10 days someone from Sheng Wuzong attacks Kuang Zun, then the young master will die. The seal itself will dissolve without a trace after 10 days. Master Sheng Wuzonga was wiping away the blood. The elders thought that just need to wait for 10 days and the master would be safe. Chen smiled hearing their naive words. In the next instant, he activated his cultivation and visualized a new seal between his hands. The young master screamed in pain. His head felt like was tearing. Chen continued to manipulate the energy with his hands. His eyes were burning with fire, and his whole appearance told that he was not joking. With a sharp tone, he ordered all of Sheng Wuzong's minions out of the academy. The elders swarmed around their master in a hurry to get him away. He was covered in blood. All of them quickly headed towards the gate in a hurry to leave the academy. Chen and the former academy master looked at them. The former headmaster standing behind Jian Chen didn't realize that they would only give him 10 days. After all, the danger to the academy was still present. But Chen Ya had his own plan. He only needed 10 days. Chen called Mr. Tong to go to the city immediately. Tong wondered why he would leave the academy at such a time. Jian Chen only remarked that there was a need to prepare for the role of the academy's headmaster. Tong and Jian Chen reached the city. They went to Jen's store. Chen opened the door and entered the store. Tong didn't understand why they had come to the store. Jian Chen's practice materials were not enough, and he decided to buy them here. Turning to Tong Chen noticed that since he and the alchemists were living in his academy, they should pay for it. Tong was surprisingly even happy about this news. He gratefully accepted it and was willing to pay for all the purchases. The owner of the store, Jen, came out to meet them, surprised that they needed to be here. Tong accompanying Academy Master Kuang Zun inquired that they had come to do some shopping. The shopkeeper looked back at Chen Ya thoughtfully. His gaze fell on Jian Chen's shabby shoes. Evaluating him further, the thought arose as to how such a ragamuffin could pay for shopping. The shopkeeper asked those who came in if they had anything to pay with. Mr. Tong was embarrassed to realize that the shopkeeper was referring to Jian Chen's shabby appearance. Tong slapped his chest with his hand and resolutely declared that he would pay all the expenses of Academy Master Kuang Zun and whispered to Jian Chen with an offer to buy new clothes. While Chen was writing a list of all the ingredients he needed, Tong and the shopkeeper were arguing behind his back about whose store was better. Chen in his mind didn't understand the reason for the dispute since their stores were almost identical and didn't know why they wouldn't end their dispute in such a case. Tung insisted that his store would be the most profitable in the future. Chan finished writing the list in the meantime. Continuing the argument, Tong handed the list to the shopkeeper and reminded him that he was taking care of all expenses. Running his eyes over the list, the owner was surprised at how many items there were. He wondered what was being planned with these ingredients, and if anything else was needed. Tong broke into a shout for the owner to hurry up and gather what he needed. The shopkeeper smiled slyly. He handed the list to his assistant and told him to get everything together. Chen watched thoughtfully to see if Tong would have enough money to pay his bill. Tong was sure that it would be enough. Half an hour later, Tong was dumbfounded by the billing of 30,000 spirit stones. He shouted a rebuke at the owner for overpriced goods. He smiled wryly and said that if he couldn't afford it, he shouldn't have come. Tong upset Jian Chen by telling him that such a sum was huge. Chen was also penniless. The owner just blurted out in a smile, informing me that for the return of more than 10 items you also have to pay. He made it clear that he wouldn't let anyone out of the store without money. Tong was about to get into a fight with him for such insolence, but Chen put his hand on his shoulder and calmed him down. He offered to trade for goods, to which the owner reacted skeptically. Chen smiled and began to accumulate energy around himself and in his hands about to show something amazing. Suddenly he began to draw something in the air and a seal materialized under his feet. Tong and the owner watched as if mesmerized. The owner praised the quality of the print, noting that it surpassed even the heavenly seal. Tong watched smugly. He was sure that the other store owner was deeply impressed by Chen Ya's skill. Jian Chen was pleased with this reaction and offered to exchange the seal for all the items on the list. The owner was wary. He was not sure of the authenticity of the seal. Chen smiled slyly, noting that an expert like the shopkeeper must have heard of the Suanju seal. The owner strained his memory and recalled that this seal had been created by deity king Tian Chen. He recalled the pictures of how it was created. It was the most powerful Nine Xuan Nine seal ever created. The owner did not believe in the authenticity of the seal knowing that it had been lost many years ago. Chen smiled in a non-committal way. He turned to leave, saying that he had come to the city for the goods he needed in exchange for the seal. If the shopkeeper wanted to see its authenticity, should follow him. The owner had no choice but to agree. 
but he warned that if it was a hoax, he would demand retribution. They came to the Kuangzun Academy. When the shopkeeper saw this, he was upset. Realizing that Chen was from an academy that wasn't exactly popular, his sadness grew even stronger. Chen stopped to look around. The patience of the shopkeeper standing behind him had run out. He began to ask when Jian Chen would show the power of the seal. Chen pointed with his hand to a stone clearing with symbols and a sign pushed back on it. He ordered its owner and the helpers who had come with him to clean it up. Such insolence made the shopkeeper and his assistants furious. Jian Chen pretended not to notice their indignation. As if in the air, he unobtrusively uttered wishes about how he would like to see this place clean, and in addition six other similar sacred places of the academy. Then he glanced sharply in the direction of the assistants and the shopkeeper, as if taunting them that this was beyond them. The salesman's face contorted with anger. He clenched his teeth. In the next instant he was ready to mash Chenya's flanks. Already he was about to move toward him and his aides were ready to back him up. Chen suddenly threw the scroll with the description of the seal and the manuscript into the alchemist salesman's hands. He said that he would have to remember what the seal he had shown him in the store looked like. Jian Chen moved toward the academy, and the shopkeeper greedily read the manuscripts. Amazed by the diagrams and descriptions in the scroll, the alchemist couldn't believe that this seal was the strongest he had ever seen. It was even stronger than the heaven-level seals. Three days had passed. Jian Chen practiced in his chambers, increasing his cultivation level. He was in deep practice. His inner gaze was open to different visions and memories of past lives and past practices. Remembering that there was one level Chen had never reached, he began to ponder about it. He also recalled his conversation from his past life with Dao about the strongest cultivation level and the Dark Lord's infinity recipe. Getting to his feet and shaking off his clothes a bit, Chen told himself that he had to be the best cultivator in all its forms. After all, in his previous life, he had been the strongest. He was adamant that in such harsh conditions, his body should be hardened as well. Suddenly, a violent flash of lightning cut through the sky outside. Jin Chen looked up, already realizing that this was the action of the Nine Seals of Xuan. A smile of satisfaction stretched across his face. The same shopkeeper that had stayed at the academy to practice printing came into the chambers. He shouted at the top of his voice that had succeeded. With an even greater shout, he marveled at the heavenly rank of seals that Chen had given him. Chen looked at him approvingly. He knew that the seal would work until three or more strong cultivators gathered to break it. Jian Chen was anticipating how angry and displeased Sheng Wuzong would be. The shopkeeper continued. After having such success with the seal, he decided to stay at the Quanzun Academy for good and informed Master Jian Chen. Emboldened by this, he sells to convince Chen Ya that he should just be here. Chen was taken aback by this insistence and asked again if the alchemist wanted to stay here for sure. At the top of his voice, the alchemist shopkeeper announced his desire to stay. Chen, pleased with this turn of events, decided to give something else to the alchemist for the good of the academy. It was another seal. Chen was already deftly drawing it in the air with his energy. He thoughtfully offered to help the alchemist with the markings and then the seal in his hands. Quickly writing down all of Chen's drawn symbols in the air, the alchemist couldn't see himself from happiness. Realizing this joy, Chen decided to take advantage of it. He demanded from the joyful alchemist a fee to stay in the academy and decided to charge him for the materials to create the seal. The joy quickly left the alchemist. He was afraid that he would have to give away a lot of materials from the store. His face was filled with worry. Cunning Jinchen decided to sweeten the news and casually took out a piece of paper. He announced that he had prepared a Dan Dao cultivation training course. Mr. Tong, who was also the owner of the herb and elixir store, jumped out from somewhere. He ran up to Jian Chen, pushed his rival away with his shoulder, and gave him the training sheet, ready to give him all of his herbs and elixirs. In turn, Tong's competitor pushed him away with his elbow, already gripping the sheet. He had already offered to deliver and prepare everything in the store for free. Jin Chen was embarrassed that Tong heard and ran to fight for the manuscript. Chen gave them the written exercise and went off to the side to think. He needed strong and talented students. More. He wanted to create a school. The image of the beautiful Xiaoyu whose grandfather had sought help to cure his granddaughter of the toxin of Tai Yin power to transform it into holy Yin surfaced in his mind. Chen also remembered that the place among the heavenly deities for the Tai Yin Lord was not occupied by anyone. Jin Chen's musings were interrupted by Jin Li's joyful brother running in. But as if recovering from his joy, Li's face grew sad. He was embarrassed that he had barged in without proper respect, because now Jin Chen was not just a brother, but a grand master of the academy. Li quickly bowed with his hands folded in a penitential posture and apologized for his behavior. 
he started to say that Chen Yu was wanted by the former academy master. Jian Chen seeing such embarrassment began to unlock Li's hands, assuring him that they were still brothers, and nothing had changed. He put his hand on Li's shoulder encouragingly, and made it clear that despite his new title of academy master, he was still Jian Li's brother and friend. A thought flashed through Chen's mind. Let him be a great genius incarnate. But the body is from the Jian family and that Li is his brother. The sadness overcame Li. His face was filled with sadness. After all, if they were brothers, their abilities should be equal. But everything had changed in Jian Chen. Chen didn't give up trying to comfort his brother. He put a hand on his shoulder and reminded him how long they had been considered the scum of the family even after entering the academy. His gaze became sharp and he noticed that everything was different for them now. Li's sadness persisted. He was worried that there were only three spiritual veins open and that he wouldn't be able to obtain the relic. He wanted a Tao relic and a chance to see the world. Hearing these words, Jian Chen rejoiced as Li's wish to join the Tao was quite feasible. They went outside. Looking up at the stars and still comforting, Li Chen assured him that he was capable of achieving more. Reviving the images of ancient times and great spirits, Chen told Li the legends of the Holy Spirit hidden deep in the body. He had met such a one but did not yet know how to open it. And in the next instant, Chen pointed his finger at Li dumbfounded by the news. It is Li who is the Holy Spirit deep down. Li opened his mouth at what he heard. Further smugly, Chen crossed his arms on his chest and smugly announced that he was one of the few people in the Northern Lands who knew the way to open a Holy Spirit. Li was at a loss for words from surprise. A little wistfully, Chen spoke of a flame capable of unlocking a spirit, and he could create it. But the danger was high. Anyone unable to receive the flame could die. Academy Master Kuang Zun looked at Brother Li questioningly, whether he was ready for this. Li was in doubt. The look on his face was frightened. He clenched his fists to the point of pain. The only thing that was clear in his mind was that this was his only chance to catch up to Chen Ya in strength. Full of determination, he shouted out that he was ready for it. Jian Chen looked at his brother approvingly, with a pat on his shoulder. Chen headed towards the gate of the academy. To awaken the Holy Spirit, he needed an elixir and a magic pill, but it was impossible to make an elixir without the important ingredient of the herb of the extinguished flame. One could only get the herb in the sunset forest. After waving to his brother, Chen assured him that he would return to him as soon as he finished his preparations for the awakening. As they approached the beginning of the sunset forest, memories came flooding back to Jian Chen. The last time for him had been almost an eternity since he had been there. He kept wondering what it would be like to be there again. Entering the sunset forest, a beautiful landscape of autumn forest with golden leaves all around opened up to Chen Ya's eyes. Some groups of people attracted Jian Chen's attention with their noise. He realized that they were robber bandits. Suddenly, the giant figure of one of the bandits and his gang appeared in front of him. The bandit was taunting Chen and it seemed they were going to rob him. Unperturbed, Jian Chen asked to clear a path so he could pass, to which the healthiest of the gang laughed. The bandits offered to voluntarily give everything of value to them. Chen smiled slyly. The bandit swung a huge stick ready to strike Jian Chen. He in turn was about to fight back with his cultivation, but from somewhere came a sword. Someone from behind struck the bulky man with a sword and he went through. He was spitting blood from the pain and the heavy wound. Some guys with swords appeared. Chen watched in surprise, wondering who these people were. Another young man with a sword announced that they are students of Xinjiang's school. And as long as they are here, no one has the right to rob or kill. The thuggish bandit grimaced in pain and humiliation. The bandits retreated helping their wounded friend. Jen Chen satisfied with this turn of events stood with his arms crossed over his chest. The Xinjiang disciples put down their swords and inquired if Chen was all right. He thanked them for their help. Remembering that these guys' school was 300 miles from the forest, he wondered why they had traveled so far away. Apparently, the chief of the disciples was not happy that Chen was foolishly wandering through the forest alone. The forest is full of monsters and bandits. He advised him to leave the forest immediately. With an annoyed look, he commanded all the students to leave. As Chen looked at them, he wondered who this arrogant, prideful man was. He knew very well that the Sunset Forest was full of monsters, demons, and dangerous animals. There was even a local demon king. Once again, a noise caught his attention. Someone was approaching. Academy Master Kuang Zun's eyes widened upon realizing who was about to attack. A real demonic giant bull with eyes burning fire jumped out of the thicket. That arrogant, prideful man from Xinjiang school threw himself into a fight with a bull. He squinted figuring out the best way to strike. 
Getting off the ground making a turn in the air, it was decided to strike from above. The cocky guy had already mentally straightened out the bull. He, smiling, squinted. Chen was completely perplexed as he watched this. He knew for a fact that the demonic bulls of the Green Tribe did not walk alone. And if you attack one, the whole herd will come running. How could not know such an elementary thing Chen was lost in conjecture? The defeated bull fell to the ground. Just as Jian Chen thought, a huge herd of furious bulls jumped out. When the students of Xinjiang school saw this, they realized what kind of trouble they were in, and thought that it was the end of them. Chen spotted a huge leader in the center of the herd. Since these guys had saved him from the bandits, Chen decided to pay them back in kind. He was willing to help with the bulls. Master Quan Zun moderately approached the guys. Those not understanding why he hadn't escaped yet, persuaded him to escape. The leader of their group was still standing in front, ready to sacrifice his life to save others. He turned and commanded everyone to run. Jin Chen smiled and remained calm as he approached the head of the team of guys. He noticed that although he had a good heart, he talked a lot. He also mentioned that the good will be rewarded for the good. The leader of the bulls stood on his haunches. He was ready to attack. Chen stood one-on-one -on -one with the ringleader. The bull emitted a stream of blue flames from its nostrils. The guys behind Jian Chen were scared out of their wits. This meant that the bull was preparing to use the magical power of demonic beasts. But the master didn't even budge. He began to concentrate energy into a blue sphere. Using his cultivation power, yellow streams began to swirl around. Building up the power of the energy rotation, Chen gathered true qi into a very real sphere around his entire body. The Xinjiang disciples opened their mouths as they watched this. They didn't even know that such a thing was possible. Chen was pushing the currents harder and harder. Everything around him was burning with fire. The bull tried to break through the sphere by bashing his head into it. Without losing concentration, Chen continued to hold the orb. He regretted that cultivation alone was not enough and was going to use another technique. A group of the same guys he met in the woods started shouting to stop him. They ran up to Chen. Putting their swords forward in front of the bulls, they shouted that the technique that Jian Chen wanted to use could not be used in the Sunset Forest. Chen smiled, not understanding the reason for their panic. They stepped forward again, left alone in front of the herd of bulls. Concentrating a smaller sphere in her hands, she spun around consisting of sheaves of energy in the solar plexus area. He pointed it at the bull and it was pierced by a discharge of red lightning. The disciples of Xinjiang school couldn't understand how it was possible to use the hidden technique of the Thousand Beasts. They were wondering which school Jian Chen was from, asking him where he got so much power and strength from. Jian Chen, dissatisfied with their idle chatter, stepped forward into the herd of tanks, and in the next moment, the entire herd was immobilized with red lightning bolts running through each bull like discharges. Noticing that he was not so good at taming animals, Jian Chen suggested that everyone run away while they had the chance, and everyone ran for their lives. A group of students were worried about what would happen if they didn't escape in time. Chen looked forward. There was only one answer for everyone. If they didn't escape in time, they would only die. They all stopped under a large tree catching their breath. The students of Xinjiang school were thinking that they could not defeat the animals by themselves. Jian Chen hearing their conversation reassured them. He was sure that everyone was safe now. After all, the bulls had attacked within a radius of five miles, and they had all run much more than that. The boys were stunned. They were incredibly surprised that Chen had counted how many miles they had traveled while running away from the bulls. Master Chen was surprised. After all, it wasn't difficult. You could say the basics. Being deep in the sunset forest, Chen still had not done what he had come here for and had to say goodbye to the guys. They bowed to him in gratitude for his rescue and said goodbye. Jian Chen kept wondering why the bulls had come so close to the beginning of the forest. Usually, they are always in the center of the forest. And was it a coincidence that the students of Xinjiang Academy were there as well? Suddenly, the pungent smell of blood hit my nose. Two breathless, bloodless bodies lay in the clearing. The wolves were roaming around. They were two slain monsters. Their ugly faces were frozen in a grimace of death agony. Chen wondered why all the blood from the corpses had disappeared. And then it dawned on him that only the Black Witch could have done it. He decided to kill her. There were some interesting events surrounding Jian Chen in the forest. He remembered that the last time he was here was about 3,000 years ago. And now he was here again. And a series of events began to happen around him, continuing his journey onward. Again, Jian Chen witnessed some sort of gathering of people in the clearing. He lurked and watched from afar. Four men surrounded the girl accusing her of using demonic cultivation power. There were also several corpses lying in the clearing. The men accused the girl of murder and intended to massacre her. She denied her guilt. 
justifying herself by saying that she came when the corpses were already lying on the ground. The men were from Sheng Wuzong School, while the girl was from Dao Jing Yu School of Demonic Techniques. She didn't deny having demonic abilities, but insisted that she didn't kill people. Sheng Wuzong's representatives didn't want to listen to her. The fact that she was using demonic techniques was enough for them. She was upset at how those who thought they were righteous would kill without proving their guilt. She gave Sheng Wuzong's disciples a stern look. She realized that it would not be possible to intimidate her with the power she possessed, even if it was demonic, and they didn't care. They had already decided to kill her. Screaming, they all rushed at the girl together. Still sitting in the distance, Jian Chen tensed up. Someone else was approaching, and Chen was even more wary. The man who came out to the men and the girl licked his lips bloodily. He took a couple more steps toward everyone in the room. He was a tall guy, clearly demonic looking. He addressed the girl like a sister. Jen Chen observing rated this guy as a very strong cultivator. He was also from the Dao Jinjing school and also used demonic techniques. Chen realized that the breathless, exsanguinated bodies he had seen earlier were his work. Young Ju, that's what the girl called the demon-like guy. She definitely didn't want him to interfere. Sheng Wu Zong's people were not frightened by his appearance. A second later, this guy spread his arms to the side and started cultivating. In a moment, everyone from Sheng Wu Zong cried out in pain. He sucked their blood out of their bodies. Everything was covered in a red veil. The blood of the unfortunate people flowed towards Chongju. Jin Chen was at a loss for words from what he had seen in his hideout. He remembered that the cultivators who had turned into demons had become bloodthirsty killers and were consuming other people's blood and souls to cultivate. It was vile to watch. The girl at the center of it all decisively cut off her brother's bloody bonds with two flaming swords. Sheng Wuzong's people were left alive. Everything that was happening and what her brother was doing she strongly disliked and gave him a hard look. Even though they were using demonic techniques and the line between good and evil was thin, she didn't think it was okay to kill and suck other people's blood. Chongzhou abruptly approached her, causing her to recoil backwards. The fact that she interrupted made him angry and look at her angrily. She was frightened but did not take her eyes off it. With one hand movement, Chongzhou threw her back into the tree. He continued his cultivation and sucked all the blood out of Sheng Wuzong's disciples. When he had finished, he turned to the girl so that she would not give herself illusions of innocence. He clenched his teeth to remind her that she, too, had crossed the threshold of the demon school. Without averting his eyes, from before his sister could get up, Chongju mockingly remarked that kindness and innocence had said goodbye to her from that moment. The girl got to her feet. She refused to accept his words as truth and refused to accept that she wasn't like him. All she wanted was to get the relic of the setting sun that would give her the power to fight demons. To this, Chongju only smiled in response. He insisted that demonic power was not a toy. His sister didn't listen to him, she just wanted him to stay out of it. After seeing her off with a glance, the demon cultivator laughed at the top of his voice. Jin Shen, who was eavesdropping on them, smiled. He remembered the relic the girl had spoken of. That relic had turned a man into a setting sun. The fact that the school of these Xinjin demons was located deep in the sunset forest seemed more than natural to Chen. He also knew that another sect was also in the same forest. Academy Master Kuang Zun smiled slyly. In his mind, he thought that it would be good if one of the demons followed him, and even better if he could suppress its will and use it as a test subject in his many practices. Encouraged by his thoughts, he went further into the forest. He anticipated that he was going to have an interesting adventure. Jianchen stood on the branch of a large tree and watched the scene below. People began to gather on the stone platform in front of the temple. Chen recognized the figures of several leaders and elders of different schools at once. There were Xinjiang, Sheng Wuzonga, Bafang Meng, and Wuj. The temple contained the remains of demons and deities, and also their most important legacy. The elders of the Sheng Wuzong schools, Sheng Jian himself and Elder Xinjiang, discussed the importance of not letting the demons get their hands on the relics. Chen did not hear from above their conversation, but he was worried that if they opened the relics, they would be no better than demons. Someone approached those already gathered. It was Yong Ju Mozong's apprentice, the demon-like one who sucks the blood out of people. Everyone tensed up, and some of them drew their swords. The two were already about to attack him and moved forward with their swords out. Suddenly a voice came from somewhere in the sky. Everyone looked up. Someone abruptly flew down landing surrounded by lightning sparks and energy. 
Everyone recoiled to the sides. A formidable face peered out from under the hood. His eyes burned with lightning fire. The tall man got to his feet and threw off his hood. To their horror, all the people present recognized the elder of the Mozong Demon Academy himself. He was the ninth strongest in the Tao realm. His name was Mo Xintian. Everyone was all panicked and didn't understand how he had gotten here. One of the students present clenched his teeth. He was afraid that Mo Xintian would kill everyone now, because not all the school leaders and elders were here. Watching everyone, Chen grinned. After all, the relic of the setting sun had begun to open. He couldn't understand how the Mozong Academy had sent just one of the nine strongest. Xintian listened. Chen Ya's sneer reached his ears. In a second, he turned toward the tree on the branch where Chen was lurking and directed a powerful strike of the dark seal there. From the surprise, Jin Chen was confused. He realized that he had figured him out, barely had time to form a protective golden seal in response to the attack. Chen has concentrated all his strength to form a defense seal and repelled the attack. Mo Xintian was astonished by this. He wondered who this stranger was. Chen stepped onto the stone plaza. He was glad that Mo didn't attack with all his might. Chen stood in front of the crowd. After looking around at everyone, Jian Chen introduced himself. The school elder Sheng Wuzong recognized the one who had placed the seal in his body and in the body of one of his students, Shang Ding Yun, who had tried to attack Chen Ya first in the city and then the Kuangzun Academy itself. The elder began to threaten Jian Cheng that he would deal with him in the academy. Jian Chen subtly reminded him that the Ten Days Seal was still in effect and that the student's life was still in his hands. Hearing this, the strongest of the nine, Mo Xintian, assessed Jian Chen as a frivolous fool who provoked the school elders. The head of Sheng Wuzong realized that he was in danger before ten days had passed because the seal was still active. He decided to spare Cheng Ya for today and wait until the seal expires to take revenge. Listening to the conversation between Jian Chen and Elder Sheng Wuzong, Cheng Zhou standing next to one of the nine strongest lost his patience and decided to seize the moment to attack Chen Ya. He decided to use his blood demonic cultivation to bleed him dry. Chen was alert and applied his defense. Even without straining outwardly, with a single protective seal, he simply prevented the blood cultivation from reaching him. He also nonchalantly addressed Yong Ju that by using such a bloody cultivation, he was standing up against the heavens and gods. Zhou smirked that only a deity would help him, and in the next instant he froze in place. Suddenly, the face of a deity appeared in the air, addressing the blood cultivator. He announced that all the cultivation basics had been violated and that he had already stood up against the heavens. This was unacceptable and that if he wanted to do so, he would be helped to realize it. Everyone present was shocked. They recognized the symbolic seal. Only one cultivator for hundreds of thousands of years could possess this seal and it could bring about the punishment of heavenly tribulation. Punish the demons for their killings and bloody cultivation. Chongzhou was still oblivious to this and was determined to kill Chenya. Mo Xintian, the strongest of the Nine Dao Nine, was standing beside him. Chen smiled. He was amused by the arrogance of demon-like people. Chongzhou dared to attack. The giant fire serpent headed towards Jian Chen. Chen didn't budge. He just stared at the serpent. He was frustrated that even after the appearance of the Heavenly Tribulation Seal, Chong didn't change his decision to attack. In the next instant, Hundreds of lightning bolts pierced through Chong Ju's body. He was completely stunned. The pain distorted his face and he was finished. Mo Xintian, who saw all of this, was astonished. Chong was very strong and not everyone could fight back. He began to fear for his life as well. The others who observed it were shocked. They hadn't seen such power before. Chen surprised them very much. Mo bowed to Jian Chen. He was very scared and begged for mercy from Jian Chen. He decided to surrender before it was too late. Chen looked at him sternly. He decided to forgive him, but with one condition. If Mo becomes his servant, the attendees just gaped at everything that was going on. Mo was terrifyingly strong, and no one could understand how he was groveling before Chen. But Xintian didn't listen to anyone. He swore allegiance to Chen with his own blood. He recited the Oath of Allegiance and sealed it with a small bloody seal. The seal with the oath lay in Chen Yu's hands. He was glad of this turn of events. Jian Chen smiled as he clenched the oath seal in his fist. He was very proud of himself that his endless cultivation had brought him such a servant. With one flurry of his hand, Chen burned the seal of loyalty fastening it. The indignation of the people present was unprecedented. They were afraid and didn't understand why Chen was such a powerful servant from the demon school. His cultivation was the strongest in these parts. 
They were angry that such an act could lead to the uncovering of the path of demons and the entire Kuang Zun Academy. Chen was unfazed. He announced that he saw neither bad nor good and would not do the work of demons. Sect leader Sheng Wuzong shouted out that if Chen killed the demon like now, everyone would be willing to turn a blind eye to such insolence. There was only one thing on everyone's mind, to prevent the demons from gaining access to the magic thread. Others supported Elder Sheng. They all accused Chen of colluding with demons. Many people began to say that Kuang Zun might be all demonic already. Chen Ye was amused by this reaction. He folded his arms across his chest and jokingly asked what they could do to him even if he was possessed. Looking at everyone suspiciously, Chan said that if everyone wanted to, he could do the same demonic thing. He asked if everyone wanted to know which one. A man came forward. It was the deputy leader of the Wuj sect. He threatened Chen Ye with death if he didn't change his mind. Chen looked at him stiffly, asking if it was a threat. Deputy Leader Wuj stood in front of Chenya. He threatened to destroy the entire Kuang Zun Academy. The others had already bared their swords. Chen didn't like his words. He beckoned to his new servant demon Mo. And he grudgingly accepted that he was now a demon servant and had to serve. The threatened man was very frightened by this hand sign. Mo Shintian began his blood magic sucking both life and blood out of the unfortunate man. Mo finished and turned to Chen. The others behind him were scared out of their wits. They shouted that if Chan continued, there would be no turning back. Chen grinned evilly. Turning to Mo, he ordered them all to be killed so that there would be no witnesses. Mo turned around to the people present. He did not understand why Chen had first said that killing was not allowed, but now so easily ordered to kill everyone. But there was nothing to do. An order is an order. Everyone was terrified. They began to beg for mercy. Sheng shouted that if he was released, the misunderstanding between Sheng Wuzong and Quan Zun would be over. The others simply asked for their lives to be spared. Chen was unyielding, he gave the order to Mo. Xin Tian started cultivating, and the blood cultivation began to just suck the lifeblood out of everyone present. Everyone was screaming and grabbing their heads, but there was nothing they could do. Jian Chen smiled as he watched what was happening. Here Mo reached those three guys who saved Jian Chen from the bandits. He was ready to kill them. Chen commanded a halt. Mo stopped. The guys Chen met in the forest didn't recognize him. They stared wide-eyed, not understanding the reason for such cruelty. Behind them lay the already breathless bodies. Jian Chen didn't feel the need to explain himself. He let them go and kept them alive in gratitude for their help in the forest. He gave them a very hard look, and he said let this moment be between them. But if they started talking, they'd die too. The guys silently left without realizing what had happened to Jian Chen. Mo Xintian didn't understand why Chen let them go if he was afraid of publicity, and if it was reasonable. Chen didn't care. He decided to do just that. Xintian remained silent. He didn't understand his new master's action. He was worried that the relic of the setting sun was about to appear, and that meant the strongest members of Sheng Wuzong, Wuj, Xinjiang, and Bafanmen schools. Mo wouldn't be able to match their strength anymore. Chen let Mo go to gather grass from the extinguished flames. He decided that he would take care of those who arrived. He deftly climbed the tree. With one leap, he jumped up onto the branch. Taking a convenient position for observation, Chen Ye waited. The relic of the setting sun should appear soon. Half an hour later, the footsteps of many people could be heard on the stone platform. They were masters of different schools. The number of corpses of the apprentices they had sent here earlier made all those who had arrived horrified. The former master of Sheng Wuzong school made the assumption that a demon-possessed person really appeared. From somewhere behind came a voice that denounced not the content demon, but who on the trail demon. Those were the three guys Jian Chen spared. They said that he was the one who did it, that the academy's master, Kuang Zun, had taken Mo Xintian, the strongest of the nine demon-like servants, as his servant, and that he had killed everyone here just for his words. The sect heads were astonished by what they heard. They couldn't understand how someone like Jin Chen from Quan Zun Academy could do such a thing. The Xinjin school leader said that the three were his students and there was no point in lying to them. Former master Sheng Wuzong kept wondering how Mo could swear the oath to Jian Chen. Quan Zun was one of the weakest sects. He asked where this Jian Chen was. Hearing his question and answer came from somewhere above. Chen jumped down from the tree branch. He stepped onto the stone platform. Chen turned mockingly to the boys he'd let go. He said he shouldn't have let them go after all. The three Xinjiang disciples were offended by such treatment. They resented how a demon-possessed man could speak to them in such a tone. The sect leaders decided to attack. 
They drew their swords and swung at Jian Chen. Suddenly, a seal of fire appeared around Chenya. Then a blue fire was lit on the mountain of the shrine. It burned very brightly. It seemed the relic of the sunset was showing itself. The sect leaders seeing this were stunned with their mouths open. The temple tower was in motion. A blue fire flared up on its top. Chen crossing his arms stood at the foot of the tower. Suddenly, a blue vortex began to swirl around the fire. Four seals appeared. The whirlwind grew stronger and more powerful. Restrictive seals were placed on the sect leaders. They were in a panic and didn't realize what was happening. They were barely able to use a medium and beggar rank cultivation. Chen looked very pleased. Still standing at the temple, he smugly announced that the relic had activated and the shrine had revealed itself, which meant that everyone in the vicinity was sealed in its power. The leaders were not relenting, they still wanted to kill Jian Chen. Hearing this Yi standing in front of them, Chen suddenly began to accumulate energy. He was literally on fire, and even his eyes were burning with flames. Chen announced that the people present would not have long to live. Now the elders were in a complete panic. They didn't understand how they could have such strong spiritual energy. Chen held two fiery energy swords in his hands and was already about to attack. He rushed amongst everyone like lightning, delivering devastating blows. First, he killed former master Shen Wuzong, then rushed towards the Xinjin sect master literally slashing with his flaming sword. Another lunge and Chen swung his sword at the others. Attendees were choking on blood. They suffered fatal wounds. Clenching his teeth in pain, the former master of Sheng Wuzong school tried to understand how everything that was happening was possible. Another of the leaders screamed from the last of his strength, threatening that his death would be avenged, and several great gates would rise. Chen enjoyed his power and only laughed at his words. Jian Chen seemed to have lost his human form. It was as if he had become a demon-like person. He darted from one to the other, killing them and enjoying his power. There were only two survivors. They begged for mercy and were ready to become Chenya's slaves. Chen stopped in front of them. He pondered whether to spare them. Returning to human form, Chen asked what they could be useful for. One pleaded that he would sell his life to survive. Chen killed one, ignore his pleas. The breathless corpse fell into a pool of blood at Chenya's feet. The last one left and he was the one Chen wanted to finish him off, too. The last survivor was from the Wuj sect. He convinced Chen Ya that he was very useful to him because all his forebears were from that sect. Jian Chen decided that he was useful and take him as a servant. They made a contract, a tracking seal. They slowly left the stone platform. The three guys from the Xinjian sect that Chen met in the fight against the tanks were also not touched and advised to get out. Suddenly, sect master Wu Ji stopped. He remembered the relic of the setting sun and wondered if Chen would take it. Chen was not interested, but he wanted to suggest something different and asked about Master Wood's specialty. Sect Master Wuji couldn't read Chen Ya, but he felt his strength and didn't resist. The tower came into greater motion. Chen commanded to go. He needed to get to the demon world. After a while, Chen was already exercising on the mountain of Kuangzun Academy. Next to him sat a battered Mo Shintian. Chen was practicing on him. He wanted him to take heavenly sorrow and obtain the demonic sunset relic. Mo was already pretty battered. Shintian looked pleadingly at Chen Ya. He begged him not to do this. He didn't need the relic anymore either. Chen stared back stiffly. He was determined. If Mo didn't want to accept it, then all that was possible was Mo's death. Suddenly, something caught their attention in the distance. Xiaoxuan's seal was broken. Chen left Mo and headed that way. It was the old master and his granddaughter Xiao Yu who had come. It looked like time had expired and Yin's power was killing her. Everyone got excited. The old man easily broke the seal. Chen came out to meet them. Jian Chen looked at them, wondering if they had come just to talk or still accept the offer to heal the girl and stay in the academy. The old man announced that he had come only for the welfare of his granddaughter. Xiao was afraid whether they could help her. Chen announced that a payment in advance for the broken seal was needed. The grandfather and granddaughter did not expect this. They stood astonished. Chen shouted at the reaction. He demanded money for permission to print and for materials to rebuild it. Grandpa smiled, trying to smooth over the conflict. He offered a ring worth 30,000 spirit stones in return. Everyone who heard their conversation was stunned at the enormous sum. Chen only smiled wryly. The elderly man decided that this was not enough and offered to send three million. Now that's when Chen and everyone standing really got stunned by the amount. Jian Chen coughed and said that was enough. Then pointing his finger at Xiao Yu, he said that the conditions were the same and that she needed to stay here to be healed. Hearing this, everyone in the academy didn't understand Chen Ya and why he would even have a girl here. Xiao Yu couldn't stand it anymore and shouted that she didn't want to hear it. Grandpa was confused. Chen nonchalantly waited that she could either be a servant girl here or his disciple. The girl 
was the very daughter of the Lord Lord of High Bidi City from the first ranked gate sect. Jin Chen turned away from them, leaving it up to them to decide whether or not to stay here. He went to take a bath. The grandfather and granddaughter were left to ponder. The grandfather thought it was better to be ashamed, but to live than to die. The girl agreed with him, but she was worried that Father Lord would destroy the whole academy if he knew about it. Chen, in turn, walked away, thinking about the Lord's daughter. After a while, they decided to go after all. When they entered the ancestral hall, they saw Chen Ya, who had already finished his ablutions. Chen was already putting his shirt on, asking if they had made a decision. Here, Xiao Yu glared at his torso. Ya blushed, realizing that she had never seen a more handsome man. Grandpa said doomedly that they were in agreement. Chen Ya was pleased by this and offered to commit the apprentice contract seal so Yu couldn't escape afterward. He touched her forehead with his finger, making a seal, then looked at Grandpa. After announcing that the contract had been concluded, he asked the old man to leave to dispel the yin that was sending Xiaoyu's body. Such insolence made the old man indignant. Pushing the old man over, Chen pointed to the door. There was nothing left for Grandpa, and he decided to leave. Jenchen locked the door behind him. Approaching Xiaoyu closely, Chen looked at her. Still looking at her calmly, he said he would start right now to dispel yin. Xiao Yu was embarrassed not expecting this to happen so quickly. After being left alone, Chen asked Xiao to undress and lie down. She was even more confused, not knowing if she was going to be cured or if it was some other purpose in Jian Chen's mind. Chen looked at her in silence. Tiredly, he explained that to find yin, one must understand where it is in the body, and through clothes it is extremely difficult to do so. Suddenly, voices came from behind the door that Shen Wuzong S-men had come. The deadline of ten days had expired, and also from behind the door, Grandpa replied that he would take care of it. If only Chen would help his granddaughter. Once again, being alone with Xiao Chan continued. Xiao began to undress. She comforted herself with the thought that it was for healing. She was untying her kimono. She continued with a hard look at Chen Ya, making it clear that she would not allow anything dirty to be done to her and would defend herself. Chen continuing to watch thought that women's problems are not insignificant. Blushing Xiao threw off her kimono and remained in her underwear. The kimono completely flew off at her feet. Seeing her in her underwear, Chen marveled at the sight of her magnificent figure. Chen noticed her beautiful form. Her breasts were unusually lush and full. The waist was slim and graceful, which was also to Chen Ya's liking. Noticing she was being scrutinized, Xiao demanded to begin. Jian Chen coughed and agreed that it was time to start. He took her hand. In one motion, he laid her on the bed. Raising two fingers up, he said he had to find the spiritual vein in her body through which yin flows, and began to slowly run his fingers from her neck down her body. After passing his neck and chest, he stopped just below his navel. Xiao was embarrassed by this action of his, and then Chan froze looking at her. He was walking a vein of yin in the thigh area. He directed a stream of his energy to that spot and Xiao involuntarily shouted. She said she was very cold. Chen continued to increase his influence in this location. Xiao began to wriggle without shutting up. Chen did not reduce the strength of Xiao Yu's piglet influence without moving. She was very cold. Clenching her teeth, she asked for it to be over quickly. Squinting, she looked at Chen Ya, asking if that was all. Chen backed off, saying that the hard part was over. Xiao jumped up, covering herself with her kimono. Chan turned away, heading for the exit. He opened the doors. Grandpa Xiao was still standing there. He was alarmed at how things had gone. If anything happened to the sole heiress of Beatty City, it would be bad for everyone. Chen calmly walked over to him, saying that everything was ready. The elderly man said that Sheng Wuzong's men from the Mountain Gate had come here, and they wanted to destroy the Kuangzun Academy. But that didn't stop them from extracting the yin from Xiao Yu's body. This news made Chen Yi a little sad, but he was glad that he didn't have to deal with Sheng Wuzong's men himself. Xiao Yu was already coming down behind him. She walked out to them, turning to her grandfather. He was concerned about how she was feeling. Xiao blushed, but she said that she felt fine. The coldness left her body and it was as if her body had more strength. She thought to herself that Chen was a kind man, helping her to heal. Grandfather recognized that even he couldn't handle the disease. And since Chen was able to help her, she should learn from him and stay in Kuangzun. Xiao bowed to him agreeing with his opinion. The old man wondered who this Chen was. He agreed to himself that if he could help his granddaughter, it would be safer for her to stay with him and she could learn a lot. He had already started to say goodbye and was about to head back to Bidey Town. Chen smiled slyly and put his hand forward. He demanded the tuition and academy fees up front. This is where the grandfather and granddaughter were taken aback by such insolence. Chen increased his pressure. He insisted that he had cured the girl. 
the stay and tuition were paid daily and that he did not intend to babysit for free. And staying and studying at the academy cost 10,000 spirit stones a day. He demanded a million at once. Realizing that now he might be asked for more stones, Grandpa hurriedly left the academy with the help of cultivation. He said that Chen would receive his spirit stones in a few days. Jian Chen was angry that the old man left without paying. At the same moment, interesting events were unfolding at the entrance of the Wuj sect in Qinyun City. There came the same pardoned students of the Xinjiang school whom he had met in the Sunset Forest. They tried to tell what crime Chen had committed by killing the heads of sex and many others with the Sunset Relic. They were not believed. Those who met did not believe their words and did not understand how they themselves had survived. The people who came did not stop. They tried to prove that everything they said was true and that Chen had gotten Mo Xintian as a servant and forced him to kill. The girl from Xinjiang tried to prove that Chen had become a real demon and did not deserve to be forgiven and protected. Someone cut them short with a harsh voice. The head of the Xinjiang sect came out. He went to talk to the Wuj leaders and was angry and upset. Since Wuji couldn't hear him, he decided to take care of it. Descending the steps they reported that they had already notified the companions by sending a pigeon to Baffinmen and the Alliance and they were on their way to Quan Zun. Strictly he continued that the strongest nine and the three progenitors would make Chen Ye pay for what he had done with blood. One of Xinjiang's disciples wickedly rejoiced that Chen would pay and be killed for his atrocities. On Mount Quang Zun pleas for help were heard and lightning bolts were revealed. Mo Xintian begged Chen Ye to stop his experiments. He killed him three, four times a day to make him stronger. Chen sat down in the lotus pose. He began to build up the energy in his hand for the strike again, and urged Mo to be an obedient servant. A new lightning strike. Shintian squirms in pain again from the piercing blow. The disciples and alchemists who were watching from afar marveled at Jian Chen's strength. They didn't understand how he used such a powerful force. With another bolt of lightning, a scream rang out. Everyone tensed and froze. Everyone ran to Master Jian Chen. They thought that he was seriously injured and needed help. Jin Chen was fuming and Mo was lying there like a dead man. While everyone was slamming the master Mo begged for help. Everyone sympathized with Mo Shintian as well. They didn't understand why he was agreeing to these experiments. Chen got to his feet. Satisfied but shabby, he decided to take a little break from experimenting. Suddenly, something happened. Xiao Yu's eyes widened as she watched. She couldn't understand what was happening. Chen Ye was enveloped in a powerful ball of burning light. Xiao Yu had already started to cry, thinking that Chen had just been burned. Then the whole place filled with smoke. Xiu once again directed her full attention to where Chen was. He was sitting there, unharmed as well, smoldering and engulfed in the energy of cultivation. Chen strengthened his cultivation and began to form a fire sphere at the solar plexus level. Everyone on the mountain just gaped at what they saw. Chen Ye's body was unharmed. Xiao Yu was more than a little scared. The lust for quick success and cultivation level made Chen Ye do everything in a great hurry. This could be harmful. Chen grinned and jumped to his feet, continuing cultivation. He convinced her that he was doing everything gradually with just quick steps. Everyone's attention turned to Li's brother who came running in. He shouted that there was big trouble brewing. Panting, he tried to explain that people from the Xinjiang and Bafang Meng sects had gathered at the foot of the mountain, as well as the Nine Alliance Masters. They were all going after Chen's head to avenge the death of their masters. Former Master Quan Zun's face changed upon hearing about the Tao of the strongest in the realm, but Chen didn't seem to care about this. Former Master Quang Zun couldn't understand how Chen had forced the strongest cultivators to come to Quang Zun's door. He was afraid that the fight wouldn't be easy. With a calm face, Chen confirmed that it was true. Everyone here was already stunned by the news. Jian Chen's gaze became rigid. The realization that the nine strongest nine in the kingdom didn't come to him in peace didn't make him happy either. The alchemist whispered, not realizing how much power one had to possess to anger the nine strongest ones like this. The former master exploded with a scream. He knew that the protective seal was broken and things were bad. Standing beside Xiao Yu was embarrassed to realize that the seal had been broken by her grandfather on their last visit. Chen, seeing what she was thinking, asked her if she was afraid and asked her to help him deal with the strangers. Xiao Yu was frightened. She didn't believe that Master Chen was asking for her help. Everyone wondered why he needed the girl's help and what he was up to. Chen clearly had a plan. He remembered that Xiao Yu's body was now filled with holy yin. He invited everyone to see what would happen. Down below, the people who had come had already demanded Jian Chen's head and were beginning to form a seal with their collective cultivation. Xiao was afraid seeing this. Chen concentrated. Chen and his disciples gathered together. The older man who came accused Chenya of colluding with demons and demanded that he surrender. 
Shio resolutely accepted Chenya's offer to deal with the uninvited guests. She began to fly down from the top of the mountain with her strength. The men downstairs, seeing only a woman approaching, froze at first, then laughed that the great master had sent a woman to sort things out, and himself was hiding behind her. Xiao had already stepped her feet on the ground. Glaring angrily at those laughing, she demanded that everyone shut up. The taunts continued. They started laughing with Xiao Yu herself as well. Xiao blushed red with anger, and in the next moment, incredible energy and light surrounded her body. It was the Holy Yin. She demanded that everyone bow before her. This did not stop the attackers, and they continued their taunts. Xiao Yu began to attack with her cultivation. The men who came also decided to respond with their strength in return. But the flow of power of Xiu alone was so strong that she easily repelled the attack of the three male cultivators. The men were stunned at what they saw and couldn't believe their eyes. There was a powerful light and energy coming from Xiao. The head of Xinjiang averted his eyes from what he saw. Ai Xiao stiffly and piercingly looked at him, then directed a powerful stream of energy in their direction. The energy nearly swept them off their feet with how strong it was. Xiao stood indestructibly in front of them. She looked down at them and had a very low opinion of their cultivation level. In her opinion, they were not capable of transforming spiritual energy into true cultivation. And then they had no right to say anything either. Chen and the students were watching everything. He called out for Xiao to come back. Former academy master Kuang Zun was very surprised at the young girl's strength. Xiao was embarrassed and started walking back. She was embarrassed by her strength. The attackers were terrified. Nine of the best cultivators couldn't stand up to one girl. Jin Chen thought that for now, Xiao Yu's strength wasn't enough to kill the attackers, but it was already difficult for them to stand against her. Rising to their feet, the enemies decided to retreat. The head of Xinjiang was angrier than ever. He made a decision to take revenge later. One of his disciples said that he had a plan. He started whispering something quickly in the chapter's ear. That being said, it made the head smiled evilly. The returning Xiao began asking Chen Ye to teach her more. She watched how he handled the lightning and how strong he was. Xiao looked at her master confused. She didn't know what she would want to learn, but asked her master to come up with practices for her. Chen looked at her. He said he was happy to start teaching. Xiao's grandfather still hadn't paid for her tuition, and Chen emphasized that was why he wasn't teaching her yet. This made Xiao very angry. Jian Shen pondered for a moment. The power of the academy was still small. So far, his trump card was only Xiao Yu's strength and the soon-to-be-revealed ancient spiritual body of Brother Jian Li. Ten days passed after this event. Chen was in spiritual practice. He pondered that an ordinary man needed nine drops of blood for concentration to make his physical body stronger. But infinite powers could require up to 36 drops of blood. Chen opened his eyes and looked at his hands. Next to him lay the already shabby Mo Xintian. Jian Chen had only managed to concentrate 35 drops of blood so far. One more drop of blood and he could cultivate at a monstrously powerful level. But Mo had reached his practice limit for today. And it was also necessary to unleash Li's ancient spiritual body. Someone called out to Chen Ye. It was the former academy master. He was running holding something in his hands. It was an invitation to a banquet from the Wuj sect. Only the most influential schools and sects were invited there. Kuang Zun Academy had never received such invitations before. Chen wondered how so Kuang Zun wasn't influential before, but that didn't interest him. He planned to continue practicing and offered the former master to go there instead, to which the former master was surprised because this banquet would raise the status of the academy, but he had to bring some kind of gift with him. Those are the rules. Chen said they would go as soon as he was done and asked him to warn Xiao Yu and Brala Li that they were also going to the banquet. Jian Chen turned away and invited the former master to follow him. He planned to teach him more skills to raise the prestige and reputation of the academy. The next day, they went to Qinyun City for a banquet. Chen and Xiao Yu were walking side by side. She tried to make conversation, but the master was not in the mood. He said he took her just for company and not because of strength or beauty. Li walked in silence. Xiao was upset by such rudeness. Suddenly four men stood in their way. The main one began to ask Chen Yu if he had killed one of the Xinjin masters. They were a master and students from that school, as it turned out. Jian Chen stopped listening to them. He grinned that those defeated by him were also here. Turning to Xiao Yu, he told her to go so that she wouldn't hear the girl's rude talk. Xiao remarked in a resentful tone that she was a lady and not a girl. Chen turned at her and asked her not to insult the lady's word. It was as if he was pissing her off on purpose. Then abruptly turned around saying that since that was the case, 
let her deal with these comers herself. He called Brother Li to go on, and they left her alone against those from the Xinjiang sect. Xiao was out of her mind with anger. Xiao glanced angrily in Chen and Li's wake. Suddenly something caught Xiao's attention. Some powerful force in the form of a vortex began to unfold in front of her. Xiao adopted a fighting stance. With one move, she threw the attackers back. She had already defeated them once, so she decided to teach them another lesson. The men scattered like skittles. Xiao's face expressed stiff determination. Meanwhile, Jinchen and Li also had a certain stranger in their way. The unexpected blow caught Jinchen by surprise. He barely managed to keep his hand from falling. Chen bounced back, grabbing Brother Li. He barely had time to land on one knee and put Li down behind him. The attackers were right in front of Chenya, some hooded man. The strength of his chi was very high and Chen noted it. He wondered how a cultivator with such strength was hidden in the outskirts of the city. But the stranger was silent. He gathered the energy in his hand again to strike again. Here already, Jian Chen had to really strain his strength for defensive cultivation. The stranger threw himself into the attack with all his might. Chen was concentrating hard to defend himself. But the stranger's energy blade simply broke through Chenya's protective seal. A jolt of energy reached Chenya. The blade was already at his face, and Chen looked simply at its tip. A new powerful flash headed towards Jian Chen. Chenya was thrown backwards. The attacker drew his blade again. Here, Chen was already scared out of his wits. He called out to Xiao Yu with all his might. The enemy gritted his teeth in anger. He realized she was about to appear. Xiao suddenly appeared between the opponents. She deftly repelled the punch aimed at Jian Chen. Chen sat up holding his wound. Xiao asked if he was okay. The attackers realized that he could not defeat Xiao. Angrily, he recognized that killing Chen would have to be postponed until later. Taking a step back, he fled in one motion with the help of the force. Xiao was about to chase after her. But Chen stopped her by the arm and said that they didn't come here for that. Taking Brother Li under his arms, Chen said, We need to make our way to the banquet in Qin Yun. As they approached the gate, Chen and his companions saw a man come out to meet them. He greeted them kindly. Then he whispered in Chen Ye's ear that it looked like a hunt was open for him. Chen Riley replied that he had already noticed it. He thought to himself that all the sects of the godless continent had gathered here, and also the sect of hidden mercenary assassins. The greeter remarked that several groups had been sent out on patrol and there was nothing to fear. Turning around, Chen looked at him and asked stiffly if he knew who started it. As he was escorting the guest into the hall, the welcomer could not find anything to say, but suggested that it was the work of the Wuj, Ange, and Dange sects. They all walked into the spacious hall, and the tension was palpable. Many people were unhappy that had invited Chen after his antics in the Sunset Forest and wondered what the catch was. Met Chenya invited them to the second floor. It was the place of honor for the distinguished of the academy. Those who were already sitting there started to make a fuss. How is it possible that Chen will be on the second floor and what does it all mean? Master Wuja cut them off harshly. He reminded them that the banquet was at their school. He yelled that everyone should behave themselves. Standing in the center, he loudly announced that Quan Zun would be sitting on the second floor and it was Wuja's personal order and asked everyone to respect this decision. The attendees whispered, not understanding if Elder Wu Mu was an ally of Quang Zun. And it was also said that Quang Zun's status would be elevated. Everyone put on tense smiles, saying that, since it was the decision of the chief of the Wuji sect, no one had any complaints and accepted his decision. Someone in the audience asked what this year's Qinyun Banquet Prize would be. Master Wu Mu, continuing to take center stage, announced the gifts this year will be many, but there is the most important and valuable Kilin Blood Drop. A precious relic arose in everyone's mind. Kilin Blood with great strength and power. Everyone became alarmed. Chan was very surprised at what he heard. His face showed genuine bewilderment. Master Wu Mu asked everyone to calm down. He didn't want to make it seem like it was something special. Everyone in the audience was not relenting. Here and there were heard whispering voices that it was incredibly rare and powerful. With a single drop, a person's body can be reborn. Shai stood next to Master Chen. She didn't expect such a rarity to be in such a place. Kilin blood is the blood of a mythical magical consciousness that no one has been able to see yet. Jenkin began to yawn out of boredom. In his mind, he thought that the noise was for nothing. After all, Kilin is just a hybrid. Jianchen's strength was higher than the Nine Gods, but a drop of Keelan's blood would mean a lot to an ordinary person. He remembered Brother Li, who was also standing beside him. For him to take a bath with Keelan blood was to strengthen his physical body many times and become stronger than any man. Li got excited when he heard this. He was determined to get his hands on the Keelan blood. When Chen heard this, 
he said that Li should get it himself. He has practiced hard and opened many spiritual veins. His strength would last him a long time. Li was embarrassed, but agreed. Chen looked at him approvingly. Li had practiced hard and his strength had increased many times over. Everyone in the audience started yelling that it was time to start the trials then. Master Wudge smiled at this and agreed that it was time to begin. Master Wudge stepped into the middle of the hall, where a platform had been set up. Standing on it and looking around at the participants, he announced the rules. All you have to do is just go up and take the challenge. He asked who wanted to go first. Xiao and Chen stood and watched what would happen next. Chen wondered who would come out first. He remembered Xiao's great strength but he didn't want to ask her from the beginning. Some man jumped onto the platform. It was Lin Mo from Xinjian High School. He volunteered to be the first one. Standing already on the platform, Lin Mo found Jian Chen in the crowd with his eyes, without taking her eyes off of him. I wondered how the nine Taoist cultivators had died trying to kill Chen. Chen caught the look in his eyes. He understood his thoughts, and although even after letting this guy go with his friends in the Sunset Forest, Chen's thirst for revenge had not died down. Jian Chen was already ready to step onto the platform for a fight. Suddenly, Lin Mo pointed his finger at the fat man standing next to Jian Chen. It was Jian Li's brother. Lin Mo wished to fight him. Lin Mo understood very well that Chen was strong, but he thought that Li was a simpleton and a weakling. Chen was puzzled. Brother Li was embarrassed and asked if he was referring to him. Chen admonished Li before the fight, saving energy and unleashing the seat of one spirit. Li hesitantly started walking towards the platform, turning back to Chen and memorizing his advice. Li was already stepping onto the platform. Lin Mo shouted that after defeating Chen Chen's disciple, he would defeat Jian Chen himself. And just when Li and Lin were on the same level, suddenly, the chubby Li slammed his fist into Lin's face with all his might. The blow was of such power and strength, Lin simply flew out of the ring with a crushing force. He was slammed into the wall. The astonished brother Li stood there with his mouth hanging open, not expecting this from himself. The Xinjiang sect members who were watching their comrade-in-arms fight were stunned. Master Yang Xuan's eyes widened. How much their disciple had talked and how he had been humiliated by a single blow. Brother Li was still standing on the platform. He was confused and turned to Jian Chen that he had just released the power that was bursting out and did not expect such an effect. Chen calmly said that when he returned to Quan Zun, he would have to undergo enhanced training. Chen turned to the head of Xinjiang with a mocking smile to see if they wanted another round. After all, this was Quang Zun's weakest disciple. Xinjiang master Yang Xuan jumped up in anger. He argued that one victory was not a victory and there was no need to rejoice before the time. He barked at the student next to him to go to the ring next. The boy had no choice but to obey. Everyone present didn't even have time to read to ten. Brother Li simply swept this unfortunate disciple out of the ring with a torrent of his power. Everyone from Xinjiang opened their mouths. Without using martial arts, Li was simply releasing a huge amount of energy. Master Yang Xuan grimaced in anger. Lai was scared of himself. He turned to Jian Chen and asked him to stop the competition. His strength was growing and he didn't want to kill anyone. The unperturbed Chen replied that he didn't mind even if Li killed everyone here. Master Yang Xuan summoned another of his disciples. Ling Xiaoxiao was supposed to be next. It was already about the honor of the entire Xinjian Academy. Ding Xiao calmly stepped into the ring. He pulled his sword from its sheath. Standing in front of his brother, Li Xiao grinned and asked not to get too upset, but he intends to fight to the death. The student fans who were watching the bout were all stunned. Xiao was the strongest of the Xinjin Academy. It was rumored that he had reached his highest body form at only 10 years old, and at 15 he had already killed a huge number of disciples. Brother Li hesitated. He looked at Master Chen asking if it was really necessary, to which Chen said to accept defeat and surrender if you don't want to fight further. Ling Xiao didn't even want to hear anything. He was already preparing to kill Li. With a shout that he would not accept his opponent's defeat, Xiao was already preparing to attack. Putting his sword forward and gathering energy, Lin decided to use his most powerful technique, the Dance of Heavenly Blades. The fans were in a deep panic. One recognized the technique and mentally buried Brother Li. The other admired the strength of Xinjiang's most powerful disciple. Brother Li barely had time to focus. He was very scared and squeezed his eyes shut. Deciding to strike with all his might out of fear, 
he threw forward a fist with a stream of energy, and an unprecedented stream of light and energy pierced Xiao so much that it seemed even his bones were visible from this light and power. Ding Xiao was just carried out of the ring into the audience by fire. He collapsed in a pool of blood and overthinking all the bones. Xiao was dead. The attendants looked at his corpse in silence. Brother Li panicked, most of all, he was afraid that he would be blamed for such a hard blow. Li didn't want to kill. From the intense fright, the energy was so powerful that accidentally protecting himself, Li killed the strongest Xinjiang disciple. Chen smiled with his arms folded across his chest. He replied that he was dead and could no longer blame anyone for anything. There were cries from the Xinjiang sect that a disciple had been killed. Yang Xuan, the head of Xinjiang, appealed to Chen. He demanded punishment for the murder. Chen smiled smugly. He saw no reason to punish him. After all, Li was just defending himself. But Xiao continued to attack no matter what. Yang Xuan head of Xinjiang became angry. It seemed unforgivable for him to laugh at such things. And since Chen was reacting like this, there was no point in the Kuangzun Academy, and it should be destroyed. Xiao Yu was indignant at such words. Chen began to provoke Yang Xuan and invite her to solve the problems in the ring. Xiao Yu and Brother Lin glanced at each other. They were afraid of this fight. Chen was serious, hosting everyone in his academy. Master Wuja tried to stop Chen. That there was no need for a fight of this level. Chen argued that there was no need to defend the honor of the Kuangzun Academy because he was its master. Meanwhile, Master Sinjin had already jumped into the ring. He confidently drew his sword and urged Chen Yu to begin the fight. Chen also jumped into the ring. He stepped right in front of the enemy. Looking at Master Xinjian, Chen scoffed at them that he was in such a hurry to die. Standing behind him, Brother Li was very worried about Jian Chen's life. He blamed himself that that Yu might get hurt. Yang Xuan looked angrily into Jian Chen's eyes. He insulted Jian Chen, but Chen only smiled and replied that he had never heard him mock. Xuan didn't understand such a reaction. Chen Ya had a cunning plan. He loudly began to say, how could such a mature master fight with such a young and inexperienced albeit master Kuang Zun? That such an unequal fight would definitely not bring master Xinjiang glory because Chen's cultivation should be much lower than Yang Xuan's. The crowd behind Xuan began to whisper that Chen was right. After all, Xuan was much stronger, and the duel was not equal. Xuan realized that the crowd condemned him for choosing such a weak opponent. Yang Xuan had no choice but to agree to fight at half strength. He announced it loudly to everyone. Chen smiled and agreed. The bout has officially been announced. Xinjiang Academy Master Yang Xuan vs. Quan Zun Master Jian Chenya. Chen looked at his opponent and marveled at his pompousness. The crowd, sensing that the fight would be spectacular, began to gather around the ring. Everyone was afraid for their master. Chen was ceding the right to make the first attack to Master Yang Xuan as the older one. Xuan prepared to attack with the Lotus Sword technique. He attacked with a shout that Chen would lose his life today. The crowd froze. Seeing the Lotus Sword, the disciples did not leave Chen Yu a chance to live. Xuan got off the ground and swung his sword forward with all his might at Chen Yu. He stood still with his arms folded across his chest. The crowd cheered. They were anticipating the end of the fight. They were surprised and amused that Chen was standing motionless waiting for his end. The blow was struck. Everything was covered in bright light and dust. Nothing could be seen. Whether Chen was alive or dead, the students and everyone else watching froze in anticipation. They were eager to find out how the fight ended. After all, no one could withstand the blow of the Lotus Sword. Yang Xuan was sure that Chen was dead. He could already feel his victory, but suddenly his eyes widened. Chen was standing unharmed. His hands were still gathered on his chest and the smile did not leave his face. He looked at his opponent and smiled even wider. He asked if he should give him a little more time, or if that was all he could do. Yang Xuan was simply amazed. He was obsessed with the question of just how many blood drops Chen had concentrated in practicing. Chen still also smirked without naming a number, realizing that he was tormenting Swan. Those who were watching the whole thing were also tormented by this question. The disciples were whispering, trying to understand how Chen had made his body almost deity-like and how many drops he had concentrated. Yang Xuan didn't give up trying to kill Chen Ya. He was preparing for a second attack, figuring that Chen concentrated about 18 drops of blood Swan considered his sword stronger and again prepared to attack. With anger, Swan looked at Chen, and he in turn did not think to move from his seat. Chen looked at Yang Xuan without taking his eyes off of Yang Xuan, expecting an attack. He had already thought of a retaliatory move. Snapping out of his seat, Chen decided to strike back. After applying the power of cultivation, 
A bright sword of energy appeared in Jian Chen's hands, and he prepared to strike Yang Xuan with it. Chen Ya's eyes expressed anger and determination. In Yang Xuan's gaze, there was horror and fear of understanding the hopelessness of his situation. Splitting his sword into two Chen struck a strong cross strike. He literally cut the master of Xinjiang Academy. He was killed instantly, and blood was pouring out even from his mouth. Chen deftly lands in the ring. Smiling Chen turned to everyone calmly, saying that victory was his. Everyone from the Xinjiang sect was at a loss for words. Yang Xuan was one of the strongest cultivators, Li Yunshan. The new head of the alliance was amazed at how easily Master Yang Xuan was killed. He decided to fight against Jian Chen next to kill him. Before Chen left the ring, the new head of the alliance jumped forward and challenged Chen. Jian Chen remained calm and just looked to see who else wanted to fight him. Li Yushan blushed red with anger. Some kid who had recently become a master thought he was stronger than everyone else. Chen looked completely relaxed. They stood across from each other, determined to start a duel. The head of the alliance looked at Chen Ya appraisingly. The one in turn condescendingly remarked that it was not worth it for someone weaker to seek a fight with someone stronger. These words made Li Yushan laugh. He didn't take anything seriously. Yushan clenched his fists and decided that he would never let Chen alive. Kieji and Chen feigned resentment. He pretended to be upset at Yushan's intention to kill him. Yushan came simply furious at such bullying. Suddenly, Chen left the ring with a single leap. As he left, he told Xiao Yu to go to the ring. Old man Yushan was too weak an opponent, and Xiao could deal with him on her own. At such news, she rounded her eyes. Chen put his hand on Xiao's shoulder and announced that she was a senior apprentice in Quan Zun, and he asked for her permission to fight Yushan. Xiao was embarrassed she didn't want everyone here to see her strength and stop seeing her as a lady. Li Yushan was indignant at such insolence. Some girl against the head of the alliance, Chen, seeing that Xiao was interfering with the shift, decided to think about increasing the tuition. He named the price of 100,000 spiritual stones, and Xiao was stunned by the figure. Xiao got nervous although her bitey city is rich, but such a price she can bear. She snapped out of her seat. Stepping into the ring in front of Li Yushan Xiao was resolutely ready to start the fight. She had already started her cultivation, and was as if she was in the light. Li Yushan rushed into the attack. He just flew at Xiao with the intention of finishing her off. With a slight movement of her hand, Xiao threw Yushan away without even exerting herself. Before he even realized it, he was flying outside the ring. Xiao turned around leaving the ring defiantly shaking off her hands, displeased at the way her hand could be raised on the girl. This is where the fans just panicked. Some girl was able to take down the new head of the alliance with such ease. The head of Wuja entered the ring, announcing that Xiao Yu had won, and if there were any more people willing to fight her, there were none. Everyone was shocked by Yushan's crushing defeat and could not understand why Kuang Zun had such powerful disciples. Li Yushan accepted his defeat to prevent a senseless massacre. Chen approached the master of Wuzong Mu Academy. He asked if it was a victory if no one dared to fight with the disciples of Kuang Zun and they had won the Qilin blood drop. Master Mu approvingly agreed with this. He also wanted to make an announcement. Leaping out of his seat, Master Mu headed to the ring platform in the center of the hall. Standing in the center, Master Mu declared the Kuang Zun Academy to be an 8th ranked strength sect. The attendees were outraged. To be a rank 8 sect, one must have at least two Taoist cultivators. And today, they saw only one of them. Many shouting that Kuang Zun didn't deserve this rank. Others from the Sinjin sect shouted that Kuang Zun was nothing. The new leader of the alliance was barely on his feet after the battle with Xiao shouted that protocol should be followed. Master Mu didn't understand why everyone was so insistent that Kuang Zun didn't deserve the 8th level. Suddenly the door opened and in walked two alchemist masters with their assistants, shopkeepers who had previously asked to live in Kuang Zun. The alchemists, Master San Tong and Master Luo Shan bowed to Jin Chen. The defeated new head of the alliance stunned at what he saw. Master Alchemist San Tong was a Taoist cultivator and was now living and studying in Quan Zun. He announced that. Standing in the crowd, the representatives of the most powerful sects in the godless continent, Deng, Zhangge, and Wuji, declared their full support for the Quan Zun school. All objections fell silent. Tepe Master Mu calmly declared Quan Zun to be an eighth rank sect. Jin Shen was weeping with happiness. After all, he knew that he could now take a certain amount of spirit stones to Wuji every month. And the higher the rank, the more stones could be taken. Xiao Yu sitting next to him didn't understand such greed for money. Chen was not surprised by her reaction because she had never known what it was like to be without money. He commanded that as soon as the drop of Qilin's blood was taken, we should return to Kuang Zun. After leaving the Wuji sect with the gifts, 
they had already arrived at the Quanzun Gate. The alchemist kept trying to persuade Jian Chen to teach them martial skills, but Chen was adamant he said that their talent was not enough for that. Suddenly he stopped and listened. Chen questioned why he was being pursued and what they wanted. Everyone stopped questioningly. A figure appeared on the path in front of them. It was the same cloaked man that had attacked them earlier on the way to the banquet competition in Wuj. He announced that Chen was born into a completely ordinary family and could not have such strong abilities. Chen smiled strainedly. He recognized Anja's assassin. Chen figured in his mind that today's banquet had attracted a lot of attention from him. After he became a master, Kuang Zun had changed a lot. The assassin smiled from under his hood and remarked that he didn't care because he had come to kill Chenya. Unexpectedly, the assassin manifested a seal with his cultivation, on which both Chen and the assassin had already appeared to be standing. Jin Chen was surprised by the dark seal. This seal dulled all senses. The assassin was about to strike. He said in a calm tone that he would end Chenya's life. The assailant reached out his hand to strike. Chen smiled, saying he doubted the assassin's plans. The killer wary questioningly looked at his victim. The assassin's eyes widened. The next second, something appeared between them. It was none other than Chen Yamo Shintian's new servant from the Demon Academy. He looked questioningly at the assassin whether he had really decided to kill his master. Chen felt proud and calm. With his arms folded across his chest, he insisted that the assassin could not take his life. Mo looked at Chen and realized he had no way out. If Chen dies, Mo dies. Shintian turned to Chen, asking if he wanted him to finish off the assassin. Chen wanted to know who had sent him first. Mo obeyed and began his cultivation. A dark, powerful glow enveloped him and he moved to attack the assassin. The hooded stranger was startled to see such a powerful level of cultivation like Mo Shintian's. He tried to avoid the fight by backing further away from Mo, but the latter was determined. Shintian simply became one solid dark energy and attacked the assassin with a powerful stream of fire. He came close to the stranger, hovering over him like a single dark cloud of power. The poor man in the cloak was already not glad he'd gotten involved in this case. A new hard tug and Mo just tossed him around like puppets. Shintian grabbed the assassin by the throat while looking straight into his eyes. Even in this position, the hooded man found the strength to ask how great Elder Mozong became a servant and follows orders. Such insolence infuriated Mo, he shook the assassin by the throat and asked who sent him. But the man was determined not to give up. If he said a word about it, he would betray his Ange school. In the next instant, he gathered the energy in his hands. While still immobilized, the assassin managed to free his two hands. He continued his cultivation by directing his own power against himself and literally tore his body apart just to avoid saying who ordered Jian Chen's life. All Mo had to do was watch him kill himself. Shintian was already sitting next to the breathless body. He looked questioningly at Chen Ya. What to do now, because he still didn't know the name of the person who had hired him to kill him. But Chen was not surprised by this turn of events. He waved his hand and replied that it was nothing big. This is Anja's standard response. They would sooner die than give up the customer. Mo asked what to do in such a case. Chen thought about it and decided that he would repair Xiao Xuan's protective seal and no one else would dare to enter Quan Zun. He asked Mo to do his own investigation to find out the name of the customer. Xintian thought for a moment. The only thing he knew about Ange Academy was that it was full of mercenaries and assassins. He had no idea where the academy was located. After pondering, Mo squinted his eyes and decided to return to his demon academy Mozong to ask for help from the demons themselves to find out the name of who hired the assassin. Chen looked tiredly at Mo. He agreed with his plan and insisted that it was necessary to find out the name, no matter what it cost. He expressed great fatigue at the fact that someone kept prying and disrupting his plans. Shintian looked respectfully at his master and wondered if he was really that serious. He was absolutely not frightened or puzzled that a powerful sect like Ange had sent his mercenary. Rather, he looked tired. Mo had already bowed in farewell. He was about to leave saying he'd do his best and be done in six days. Just as suddenly, Chen tripped him and Shintian collapsed to the ground without even expecting such a thing. Jian Chen stood over him with a sly smirk. He remembered that he still hadn't concentrated the 36th drop of blood to gain strength. For Mo, this meant a couple more painful attacks. For the experiment, Shintian grimaced as he lay on the ground, but only uttered a full assent to his master. Mo closed his eyes doomedly, letting go, a tear of regret. After a while, Mo Jianchen and Li's brother were on Mount Kuangzun. They were practicing and training Li. 
Mo and Chen were surrounded by lightning. Apparently Chen was practicing techniques on Mo again. Xintian was quite tired already. Brother Li was learning how to concentrate energy and control it properly. Li sat motionless in a meditative pose creating a sort of dome around himself trying to learn to control his new power. Chen stood there full of joy. He was clutching an energy lightning bolt in his hand. Chen had successfully managed to concentrate the 36th drop of blood into it, meaning that he had reached the infinite technique. Poor Mo stood behind him, fuming. Seeing the satisfied master, Xintian found a way to escape quickly so that he wouldn't have to participate in the training as a punching bag anymore. He bowed and remarked that since the master had finished, he could go to investigate the assassins. He couldn't take any more blows like that and he really wanted to get out of here. Standing with his back to him, Chen saw no need for Xintian to be here any longer. Li's training was almost finished, barely forgetting Chen before leaving. Mo asked him to call Xiao Yu here. After all, her strength also needed control and more practice. Brother Li kept sitting there trying to curb his strength. Something went wrong and he squirmed. He screamed at the sensation of power tearing him from the inside. Li asked Master Chenya for help. Chen came up behind him and put his hand on Li's shoulder. It was gone in a flash, as if it had never happened. Li opened his eyes. Jen Chen looked worried. The power in Li's body was very fierce, and if Chen was late, irreparable things could happen. Jian Chen calmed down Li. The force began to subside and Li breathed a sigh of relief. Xiao Yu came in. She was dissatisfied that Chen was always sending his servant Mo Xintian to fetch her, and he never came himself. She began to feel that the teacher was not eager to teach her. Chen advised her not to try to invent something new or unusual. He said that the tried and tested standard methods could be more useful. It is necessary to first feel the flow of power and just be able to release it. It might not work the first time, but practice makes a big difference. Unexpectedly, Xiao suggested to the master to test her in a fight. She wanted to fight with him. Chen laughed. He refused to fight Xiao Yu, but put brother Li ahead of him. He said that he too had trouble concentrating his strength and they could fight each other. Li hesitated. He turned to Chenya and asked if he was sure that his strength and Xiao's strength were of the same level. He was afraid that Xiao would smash him like a weakling. Xiu exploded at such talk. She was angry at such an assumption by Li. In time, Xiao pulled herself together and calmed down. She had noticed that she had become very stiff and unfeminine when she had gotten into Quan Zun. Xiao's face changed. She calmed down and smiled and said, Can she really be stronger than Li? After all, she is a lady after all. Chen and Li looked at her, not knowing what was going on. After thinking, Li said she didn't want to fight her. Chen was getting annoyed. Then since Li didn't want to start a fight with Xiao, he decided to fight him himself. Li became even more worried. He was afraid that he couldn't handle the force and still not control it. Xiao laughed and asked the master why waste time on Li when he could fight her. Master Chen smiled. He assured that he had enough strength to fight Li and Xiao. At the same time, he wanted to see how his new power would behave. Xiao was pleased with such news. She had wanted to try her hand at fighting Chen for a long time. Li, on the other hand, was just resigned to this part. Li and Xiao took up their fighting stances. Lastly, Xiao said that if anything happened, she would not blame her or Li if they miscalculated their strength. Li didn't want to hurt Chen, but there was no choice. Jian Chen only smiled. He snapped out of his seat. Applying cultivation, Chen was about to strike with his fist. He swung with all his might and hit Li. The power of the blow was so high that Li flew off the ground and flew aside, Li barely landing any meaningful shots. He was shocked by the blow. It seemed to him that the blow was something iron and heavy, but Chen assured him that he had only clenched his fist and had nothing else in his hands. Chen decided to continue. He told Li to attack back. The latter accelerated and decided to attack with more force. No sooner had Li gotten close than Chen simply with one incredibly powerful blow ripped him off the ground again and lifted him into the air. Li flew even farther away than the first time. Chen was disappointed that Li was not as strong as he could be. Jian Chen stopped the bout. He told Li to go treat his wounds and think about today's fight. What were the mistakes and how to avoid them? Chen was extremely satisfied with his new cultivation power. The new inexhaustible cultivation method was very powerful. Li slowly stood up holding his wound. His new power was causing him a lot of problems. He could hardly control it and thought every time he was about to die. Now it was Xiao Yu's turn. Chen smiled slyly and signaled for her to step on. Xiao was really scared. After she saw what Chen was doing to Li, 
she was scared. Chen saw it on her face and began to giggle at how she wanted to fight, and now she was afraid. Xiao timidly asked if the master wanted to kill her, but there was nothing to do. Xiao started cultivating. She took a stand and it was like water swirled around her. She threw a punch. Frozen drops of water flew at Chenya. He became frustrated. The water technique was the most hackneyed and commonplace technique. He pestered her not to use this trite technique anymore. Xiao objected. The water martial arts were the strongest in Qinyun City, and there was no equal in Baidi City. Chen didn't even bother using two fingers to repel the attack. With only one hand, Chen dispelled in general all the attack directed at him. Xiao stood watching from the sidelines. Chen grinned at Xiao's words about water techniques. He clearly showed that they weren't that strong. For a moment he thought about what he could show to demonstrate the shortcomings of this technique, and he chose fire. He put his hand out in front of his face and prepared for a fancy burst of energy. A huge, incredible flash snapped from Chenya's hand. Xiao didn't move from her seat. An incredible force like a huge lump of fire was bearing down on her. She was very frightened. She couldn't believe that Chen had aimed such a powerful blow at her. She barely had time to cover herself with her hands from the blow. Suddenly, Xiao saw pieces of her clothes being picked up by a whirlwind and blown around. She looked around herself and realized that the powerful stream of impact had ripped off almost all of her clothes. Only small pieces of her dress covered her incredibly beautiful young body. Chen stared at her like a bewitched man. It was impossible to tear his gaze away from such a sight. Shai shouted at him. Where is he staring at? Chen was embarrassed and averted his eyes. He realized that he had overdone it. Chen started to take off his kimono. Xiao was confused, not knowing what was going on. She asked what he was doing. Chen calmly replied that too, wanted to take off his clothes to make it fair. Xiao decided that it was definitely unnecessary. She wanted to approach Chen Ya, barely covering her body with her arms. Taking one step, Xiao suddenly stumbled. She had already started to fall towards Chen Ya, and then the unbelievable happened. Chen caught Xiao Yu, but he caught her right by her semi-naked breasts. His hands went straight to her lush breasts. In his hands, Chen felt Xiao Yu's soft and firm breasts. Chen couldn't believe it. He stood like that, clutching Xiao's chest. She squirmed in embarrassment. In the next moment, Xiao Yu shouted Jian Chen's name so loudly that it was heard throughout the entire mountain and even all the way to Kuangzun Academy. Chan ran down the mountain. The alchemists Luo Shan and Tong San were on their way to meet him. Chan ordered them to bring Xiao's clothes and healing elixirs. Thinking about what had happened, Chan realized that Xiao Yu could have been seriously hurt, and it upset him. But then he remembered how she'd fallen into his arms, and decided that the feel of her soft breasts in his palms was worth it. Luo Shan wondered why Chen was running away. He asked why Chen would leave such a beautiful student. Had he done something wrong? Chen angrily asked what other problems the overly curious Shang had. Shan decided to change the subject. He had learned some great news. The famous Bei Mingyuan Academy was starting to recruit students. He asked if the master would like to participate. Chen hesitated for a moment. Bei Mingyuan was the most famous academy near Beigu City. Chen wondered why he should become a contestant. After all, he is already a master. Shan replied that the academy belongs to Sifan Shin himself. Many famous sects like Julu, Balyu, and Kilu are just dreaming of going there. Chen was skeptical. He looked at Luo Shan and asked what this Xinyu was so famous for. The alchemist didn't know exactly, but remembered that the academy was founded by a man named Shenian 2000 years ago. Chen froze. His eyes widened. He recognized the name Shenian as the name of an ancient god. Chen stopped to think. He remembered that the entire Sifan Shin was divided into four parts. Beiming, Nanhuang, Danli, and Xixue. Only the most capable of these sects could enter Sifan. Chen decides that if Sifan was founded by Shen Yang himself, he left his legacy there. Master Chen asked the alchemist if he himself could enter this academy, to which the answer was no. That was against the rules. Chen walked past the alchemist. If he had to follow the rules, then so be it, he decided. It remained to find out where Beiming Yuan was. He had to get there first. The alchemist knew. Beiming was 600 miles north of Qinyun City. He raised his finger a lot significantly. Chen got ready to go. The alchemist asked to go with him, but Chen refused. If Ang still went to kill him, then there was no point in taking the alchemist with him. Chen took another step and something incredible happened. With the next step, he completely changed his appearance and clothes and even his hair. Quan Zunxuan's seal of protection had been restored. In addition, two great alchemists remained at the academy. Chen decided that during his short absence, nothing terrible would happen. 
Chen in his new appearance was on his way to Qin Yun City. He was surprised at the number of people going to Beiming. He walked past the men sitting and discussing something. He heard that the selection process for Beiming Yuan had already started, but the criteria was extremely strict. Cultivation must be at a colossal level and the age must be no higher than 18 years old. They said that there were only a few people in Qin Yun who were allowed to enter Beiming Yuan. Chen Ye's attention was particularly caught by one man's words. At first, he was surprised that there must be a great number of young and talented masters there. Then he remembered some World Bank and said that he hoped there would be masters from there too. Suddenly, a friend sitting next to him put his hand over his mouth. The other one laughed and thought he had just had too much to drink. Chen Ye was interested. He walked on thoughtfully, repeating the World Bank to himself. What was that thought that kept him thinking? Chen paused to think. He speculated perhaps it was those who held the entire economy of the godless continent. They traded all the spiritual stones for divine techniques. Chen had heard that those who crossed their path could not live peacefully on the continent afterward. Chen squinted he had absolutely not expected such a scheme to become so popular. The men seated at the table continued their discussion. Chen was not far away eavesdropping. They discussed that not long ago Sheng Wuzong had gone to attack Kuang Zun, but no one had returned. They were extremely surprised because it was thought that Sheng Wuzong was stronger than Kuang Zun. Chen smiled when he heard this. He noted that since his rebirth here, Sheng Wuzong had become the center of everything that was going on. Chen went outside. Something was happening there. All the people were being dispersed from the road. Lord Duo Xiao was coming and the guards were just chasing everyone away. Chen paid no attention to it, continuing on his way. One of the passers-by tried to warn him. He turned around in bewilderment. He was just being driven at full speed by some bratty kid on horseback. He was boorishly asking everyone to give way to him. Such insolent behavior ticked Chenya off. He turned around and decided to get the boy lord. Gathering strength and energy in one hand, Chan toppled both horse and rider in one motion. The young lord simply tumbled from his horse to the ground. The horse lay unconscious. The lord flew even farther away. People ran over to help the lord get up. Chen just stood not far away. The Lord jumped up, showing Chen the middle finger. He was an insolent, spoiled brat. Looking at this picture, Jian Chen was even a little surprised. Then the whole thing made him laugh. He thought the Lord was like a pesky flea. Maybe he should just finish him off. The Lord's guards rushed at Chen Ye with swords and shouts. They were out to get him. Chen didn't move as he watched all this. He took a stand. Energy began to rise beneath his feet. In the next second, everything was filled with light from the cultivation. All the guards were simply lifted into the air by a tremendous force. Chen seemed to have made great strides in his endless cultivation. The guards just fell over each other. Calmly surrounded by power, Chen slowly approached the Lord, who tried to get up from the ground. He wanted to show him that that he was born into a rich family does not give you the right to insult and humiliate everyone as you want. The Lord tried to object. He said that his last name was Duo and that Chen Yu was certainly not one to say hello. The power around Jian Chen was growing. He walked close to the spoiled boy and made it clear that he was not interested in his origin at all. Chen looked down at him with a terrifyingly hard and stern gaze. Bending very close to Lord Chen's face, he smiled evilly and said that just his existence was a huge annoyance. Lord felt an animal fear. People began to gather around. Everyone wanted to see who dared to threaten Lord. Poor cowardly lord shouted that he was the youngest son of one of the founders of the World Bank, that everyone would kill for him. Chen didn't like what he heard. He didn't want trouble for himself and the Kuangtsung Academy from powerful men. And then a thought struck him. A smile stretched across his face. He remembered that he was now in a completely different form, which meant that he had nothing to do with the Kuangtsung Academy or Master Jian Chen. Chen continued to play his part. He pretended he didn't care about the boy's name or status. He called himself the young master of the fictitious Tongtian Temple. The young lord fell into a perplexed state. He had never heard of or known about the Tongtian sect. These words puzzled him. Chen was not satisfied with his image. He began to insist that his temple was a great legacy and not some sect. The boy still didn't understand whether it was a sect or a temple, but he insisted that it was better for no one to mess with the World Bank. Someone came up from behind Chen. It was the two young strongest masters of the Jian Yizong sect. One of them turned to the boy and said, Is he fooling around again that he is the youngest son of one of the founders of the World Bank? Chen, hearing this in his mind, thought that the kid was just lying about his origin. The Lord was upset and asked him to shut up. 
He didn't stop and kept saying that his lies only annoyed everyone around him. Chen noted to himself that the Jianyizong sect had sent two of its strongest disciples here as well. Jian Qin had already decided to approach this false son and ask him why this circus and his fictions. The boy snapped that no one would do anything to him even if he was lying. The two young men who came in were puzzled by these words. They tried to defuse the situation by advising Chen to ignore his nonsense. He is certainly not the son of one of the founders of a world bank, but heir to Baidi Haihei. That's where Chen got perplexed. Baidi Haihei was the best Sekia that could compare to Baidi City, and this brat is representing it and lying about it. The Jian Yizong guy looked at the boy sternly and put his hand on his shoulder as a sign of support. He asked him to stop fooling around and be serious. After all, his father had banished him from Heihei and as long as he was fooling around, he wouldn't be able to go back. The kid got angry and yelled that it was none of his business and none of his business at all. They separated. Chen smiled at the whole story. The boy did not stop and finally shouted that he would check everything about this obscure Tuntian temple, and if it was not true, he would come back and kill Chen. Jian Chen only smiled. He knew that when the truth was revealed, it wouldn't matter anymore. The only thing that mattered now was getting to Beiminyuan. A day later, everyone approached the walls of Beiminyuan city. Jin Chen walked silently in the crowd of others. The boy Lord Luo walked ahead with his escort. He did not stop in his reasoning that there was no Tuntian temple and that he would investigate, and if he found out that it was a lie, he would hang Chen's head over his bed. The two attendants decided to discuss it. They asked why they had come all the way here and what was most important to them. The boy was embarrassed. He replied that everyone came here for one reason, to receive the legacy of the spirit mind. The attendant who was walking at the side grinned that the Baiming sex recruitment had not attracted such a large number of people before. After the rumor about the legacy of spiritual intelligence was spread, there was a huge number of people who wanted to come. Chen heard their conversation, and it made him think. Chen realized that there was a lot he didn't know yet, and the legacy of the spiritual mind was one of the things he hadn't learned yet. I'm stopping here, guys. If you like this video and want part 2, hit 2000 likes under this video. Also, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and leave a comment. Until the next video.